Okay, the show started, everybody. We got a huge list tonight, so we're just gonna get this thing moving. How's everyone doing tonight? There we go. Some good feelings, some emotion. How you doing, man? Yeah. Hey, thanks for putting out a new music video this week. We appreciate it. Uh, he's a white rapper looking guy. That's the joke there, if no one got it. Uh, and, yeah. Cool. Uh, I don't know if that was folding laundry or your hip hop moves, but either way, I appreciate it and I know you learned that in the system. Uh, hey, we have a prison guard on the list tonight. That's gonna be exciting for some people in the crowd. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go over the rules real quick just because we have such a packed list tonight. Here are the rules. Rule number one, fucking laugh out loud, please. When you guys just smile and nod, that's not enough. Uh, these guys are all recording themselves. You see this thing? This thing is recording them. And when you're smiling and nodding, it's not facing you. This has already set us back so far. I'm not gonna make any money tonight. I cannot get a crowd shot. And then they listen to the recordings and you're not laughing. You're smiling and nodding and they kill themselves. And that's a serious thing, okay? You guys are laughing, but suicide is not a laughing matter. Wait, you have some smile? No, you can laugh whatever you want. I just say laugh. Uh, I also encourage you, if you don't like something, to boo. I mean, go for it. Honestly, as long as it picks up on the recordings, just go for whatever you want. Uh, aside from that, a couple other rules. Uh, please keep your tabletop to a minimum. If you mess with the comics, they will mess with you back. If you get upset about that, then tell me or Bridget. We will also make fun of you because that's ridiculous. Don't interrupt people who are on stage. Third, this is a bathroom. You may use it. I legally cannot stop you from using it. However, I will tell you, if you have a powerful stream and I do this, I will pick up every drop of pee through the door. And when someone's not doing well on stage, that's an easy go-to to get laughs. Uh, I say that especially for the women, because the women think it won't happen to them, and it does, and that's a really uncomfortable conversation that I have to have downstairs. So I'm just telling you, you can do that. And by the way, if you think you're being cute and clever, when the three of you go in together, we know you're doing drugs. <laughs> this is home sweet home. You're allowed to just do on the table. Honestly, it's better for everybody. It's cleaner for you. Uh, aside from that, uh, if you are a performer and you see non-performers hanging out on the staircase, looking around up here, go ahead, pick your stuff up, uh, give them the spot, because we all know that they laugh more than you do. Aside from that, are we ready to get the show started? Yeah! All right. I, uh, I have a couple of things I wanted to try out. I don't know if you guys, uh, I'm glad that Pride is here. You guys happy that Pride's here? Yeah. Pride. You know what, you're the one guy in the room I would have looked at and said, eh, he's nonplussed about Pride. Uh, I'm happy Pride's here because it means all the ads on the TV have changed, all my Hulu ads have switched over. Now it's just BMW telling me they love gay people, which is great. Because uh, my last month has been nothing but a new deodorant product for women. It's good for here. It's good for here. It's good for here. I kind of get that. And then the lady pulls her jeggings out and sprays it down there. I didn't know that was a product category. <laughs> I didn't know that was a problem. I wish I didn't know it still. That's really changing it up for me. And I'm, that wasn't around, that's a new product, right? That wasn't around when I was single because I would have been really freaked out if I was hanging out all day at the river with somebody. We start getting it on, I pull their pants down and I said, is that fresh linen? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's nice, but it's not trustworthy. That seems like you're a dirty, shady bitch. You should smell, you should smell like river water and, you know, stale Miller Highlight for my fingertips. Uh, but I'm into equality, you know, so I think we should do a male version of that. So uh, I have uh, sandalwood balls tonight. If you guys like to come smell, it burned like a motherfucker, but that's because as a young man, I had fun at the river. Uh, that's a joke about how I have herpes. Uh, I'll just spread that around. I'm married now. I don't care if people think I have herpes. Uh, <laughs> that's my pussy deodorant joke. I should probably find a new way to write that on my note card in case I lose this somewhere. Because uh, that's going to be hard to explain. I used to have a note card that said cute pussy and child porn on the top. And I was like, I need to switch this up. I need to change the code words. Um, aside from that, I'll, uh, I'll finish with this because we have such a busy show tonight. Uh, I have two kids. I have two sons. Uh, and it's sort of my job, you know, to raise them to be men, to teach them how to be men, which is a big responsibility. But I had to start, you know, I had to like start early. So the other night, my son's two. My wife is putting him to bed and she wants a kiss. He doesn't want to give her a kiss. That's a two-year-old thing. So she says, I'm gonna steal a kiss. 
steals a kiss, and he starts crying. So it's my time to come in and say, hey, knock it off. You're a man. Don't cry. Here's what you do. Next time mommy steals a kiss, the criminal code, that's called burglary. This is your room. It's time to stand your ground. Next time she tries to burgle a kiss, square your shoulders, shoot that bitch right in the chest. It's called the castle doctrine. Be a man. Anyways, uh, I'm having a hard time doing that joke. People don't like the idea of uh, young boys murdering their mothers for some reason. Uh, but I think I should at least get sympathy last because it's almost Father's Day. Uh, everybody, are you ready to begin the show? All right. We have a lot of new comics tonight. We have a lot of comics who are new to this room, so it's going to be a good one. Everybody put your hands together for the very first comic of the evening. Ayush! What's good, home sweet home? Yeah, that's nice, that's nice. You know, one thing I never really understood was why uh, racist people call brown people monkeys. I never really got that. Um, and then one day, my dad was telling me a story from his childhood. This is a real story. My dad grew up in poverty in India, and he was like, we didn't have food, we would have to climb the tree, and pick the fruit. You know, we would pick mango, we would pick coconut, we would pick bananas. I was like, yeah, that's some monkey shit, bro. <laughs> that's some monkey ass shit. There was probably a British person that saw that and was like, oh, look, look at that monkey. Yeah. I'm not very good at British accents. So <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, I uh, I recently uh, got broken up with, it's been tough. Uh, my ex, she was dyslexic, so when she told me she wanted to get an IUD, I had to take her car keys away. <laughs> there was, uh, yeah, thanks, I know. <laughs> I appreciate it, yeah. Um, nah, she's, she's not a bad driver, but she is a white girl, so she'll fully like hit a curb and be like, ah, oopsies, you know, I, I, I'm just a girl. You know, one time we were in a Ben and Jerry's parking lot. She ran over a group of kids. That's not the funny part, man. <laughs> I wanted vanilla. I ended up getting a rocky road. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. No, my ex and I had a lot of differences growing up. You know, she grew up, um, like, in a house. <laughs> and I grew up, my family owned a motel. That's where I grew up. And, you know, it was like the sweet life of Zach and Cody, but no fun shenanigans, just math, child labor, and tears. It was, it was different, very different environments. Different environments, right? Um, she grew up in a neighborhood, and in that neighborhood, something that they would do for fun when she was a kid is pick berries, mash it up, and use that as paint. And when she told me that, I was like, you know, that's some monkey ass shit right there. <laughs> that's some monkey ass shit. Rafiki from The Lion King. That's, uh, man, how the tables have turned. You know, I never, uh, I never learned how to ride a bike. So in order to make up for that, I went to spin class. And nobody told me that spin class destroys the, like, the fucking, the gooch whatever the area between the ball sack and the asshole is, I walked out of that shit it's like a taint. A taint, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thank you, gay man. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you, gay sir. <laughs> Ally. <laughs> oh. The taint, the gooch, whatever it is. I walked out of that shit like a Minecraft character. I was ready to start building, bro. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, that was when I was like 16. 18, I got with a girl. And I had to have that conversation of like, you know, I haven't been with someone in a long time, uh, so be patient with me, you know, in the bedroom. And she was like, don't worry, sex is just like riding a bike. I was like, fuck! Am I doing it right? Did you come yet? All right, don't worry about that one. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. But <laughs> oh. You know, growing up Indian, that means that you only have a few career choices. 
uh, that you could follow. You know, I could either be a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. And I said, I was in high school theater at the time. I told my dad, I want to be an actor. He said, no son, it's pronounced doctor. <laughs> I told my dad I wanted to try comedy. He was like, you should do engineering. I wanted to see if he was really paying attention at this point. I was like, dad, I want to be a male stripper. He said, you don't have the body for that one. You don't, you need the motion of the ocean better. You don't, have, this is how I made you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I appreciate it. My name is Ayush Patodi, and thank you guys very much. Give it right, Ayush, everybody. Ayush. Or don't. That's fine. Don't worry. I, Ayush, I also, I also cannot do a British accent, but I can do a great Indian accent. Unfortunately, we're so short on time. I have to keep it moving, everybody. Your next comedian coming up to the stage, everybody. Put your hands together for Lazarus Hamlin. Hey, ho, sweet ho. How y'all doing? This is nice. This is nice, white people. This nice little, just put a little segregation up in the attic. I see, normally we in the basement, but they put y'all in the attic, tucked away from everybody. This is nice. They don't even know what we doing up here. That's the best part about it. I really love this shit. It's men's, uh, it's men's Mental Health Month. Woo! I found that out today, like a bit, because I, I did my research, because I knew it was Pride Month, too, and I'm like, that's crazy. How you gonna make Men's Mental Health Month and Pride Month the same month? So I did some research. Men's Mental Health Month started in 1994, and then in 1999, that's when they got the LGBT Pride Month. So I was like, damn, that's crazy. Like, somebody was just sitting around like, man, I'm really having a rough time in my life, and they was just like, have you tried sucking a dick? You know what I'm saying? Like, they just threw that right at him. It was like five years later, if you just had more gayness, you might be a lot happier. Because a lot of gay people aren't sad. You know, so I've I never really seen a sad gay person, not personally, you know? I work with a dude that's gay. I don't know this, but he probably gay, he probably gay. <laughs> And it's like, and I always know that he happy because like, he be singing to me when he see me. I don't think he does it on purpose, but every time he see me, he's like, hey, how's it going? All right. And I'm like, why are you in B flat? Like, why you, why you can't just say, hey, like a regular person and move on? You know what I'm saying? He is a regular person. I don't, I don't mean it like that. I ain't trying to. Yeah, watch what you say. You'll get canceled and shit. I, um, kids, we need to bring back ass whoopers. Yeah. Ass whoopers need to come back, you know? I'm not talking about, you know, like unwarranted beating. I ain't talking about like, you know, Jenny Daddy on Forrest Gump type shit. Yeah. I'm talking about like, I'm talking about like, you don't clean your room, you get your ass whooped. Because I got a nephew and he is fearless. He not scared of shit, you know? I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the room playing the game with my nephew, you know, and we just talking back and forth. And I'm about to leave, I said, all right, man. I said, you want me to, I'm fucking with him. I'm like, you want me to check under the bed for the boogeyman? He said, I ain't scared of no boogeyman. I said, you say that now. When he come get you in the middle of the night, you gonna be scared. He gonna tell me, I bet his ass pull up. I said, what? <laughs> I'm like, you seven years old. Like, you not scared of the boogeyman? He was like, no. Nah. I said, what you scared of? He said, I don't feel nobody but God. I called my sister immediately. Like, this, he needs some counseling. Cause how you seven years old and you fearless? I blame NBA young boy. He's inflaming these youth. That's why they don't know what to do with their life, you know? I had a really good day today. Uh, I saw some loose titties under a Hanes t-shirt. <laughs> and I think that really does something to me. That's why I really like this time of the year because undergarments aren't really necessary. You know, like, you want to wear drawers on a day like today? You can, but if you don't, it's cool. Like, everybody gonna understand, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're a man. But, at the same time, you gotta wear deodorant. Deodorant never goes out of style. Like, I don't understand the winter time, everybody don't wear deodorant, but summertime, like, it's time to, you know, you might use a swipe or two, just to keep yourself sane. And I realize there's a lot of wild motherfuckers out here, because I went to get deodorant myself, and I know the 72-hour deodorant. My question is, who the fuck tested the 72-hour deodorant? Like, who went two days and was like, you know what, I can get a third day. Hell no! <laughs> My daughter lasts me nine and a half hours. I know exactly, when I put my daughter on, I start working immediately. Sometimes I keep my daughter with me. I put it on as I get out the car at work. So I know my daughter gonna make it the whole shift. 
You ever ran out of the order at like two o'clock in the day, you don't get off till five? <laughs> now you walk around trying not to put your hands up, trying to stay away from people. It feel like, now I know what lepers feel like. <laughs> That's what lepers felt like in the Bible days. They just walking around like, I don't want to touch nobody. You know, I'm just out here and shit. I got a friend that I'm judging right now. I was trying to get in contact with him and shit. <laughs> And uh, he broke his phone, so he wasn't getting back to me. Once he got his phone fixed, he called me. And I was like, man, where you been at? He said, I broke my phone. I said, how you do that? He said, I sat it on top of the car. I asked him, why you didn't put it in your pocket? He said, I didn't have any pockets. I said, wait a minute. Where the fuck was you going as a grown ass man with no pockets? Like, he said, I had on sweatpants. I said, no, nah, motherfucker, those are loose leggings. Nigga. Those are not sweatpants. As a grown man, you should always have pockets. Thank y'all so much. Y'all been a great crowd. Everybody, keep it going. Alright, I told you we got a big show tonight. We got a lot of people coming up. Your next comic had drove up here tonight just for this show. All the way from Georgia. Not Savannah. He just told me where. I forgot. I don't know. Who the fuck knows places in Georgia anyways? But your next comic is a real southern yokel. Put your hands together for the inbred comic, Lance Weiss. Thank you. Hello, yes. Um, I did drive. I just drove eight hours here, and no, not for this, though. Uh, I'm actually going to leave directly after this to keep driving north. So, uh, but this is a nice stop. A lot of dudes here. That's pretty kick ass. You know, any single ladies here? Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, all right, okay, all right. All right, don't waste my time. I drove eight hours for this. I don't know if you heard that or not, but uh, okay, thank you. Here come the jokes. Uh, does anybody here want to fight? No. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, just checking if anyway, I'm going. I'm going from uh, open mic to open mic across the country, seeing if anybody wants to fight, so... I got low self-esteem and I'm looking for somebody's ass to kick. So, guess it's not happening here. Any single ladies here tonight? No. Okay, I was just seeing maybe it changed. Maybe someone saw the talent. Maybe had a different... How much more time do I have to do up here? Here we go, guys. Uh, uh, there's a group called Alcoholics Anonymous, right? You guys know that. Um, I'm part of this group. It's called Big Dicks Non-Anonymous. It's uh, where I just go to groups like this and let you guys know they got a nice piece. So, any single ladies here tonight? Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's how it works. You know what I mean? You drive eight hours, you can get some of this as well. You know, you drive under eight, it ain't happening for you. You gotta drive eight hours to go to this weird... This looks like we're inside of a giant bathroom with all this graffiti. It looks like, hey, this used to be a big communal bathroom where it's just fuck you all over the wall. And now we're just diarying on stage. So, pretty good. I gotta be honest, my lips just touched this microphone and I've never been more terrified in my entire life. It's just, I wanna go just home or wherever I'm gonna end up in DC next. Uh, that's where I'm staying. Don't follow me, please. And uh, just, I just wanna take a shower, so. I don't know if you guys are interested, after this thing, I will actually, I'll be in this bathroom selling DVDs, and uh, it's a DVD of this thing right here. I'm actually, I have a videotape set up on the roof of the McDonald's, and I videotape, not this one, I have my own over there on the roof, and uh, so, great. Hard to build momentum in this room, huh? Wow, you're not talking, it is silent, uh, okay. All right, what else we got here? Um, I just bought a new car. Uh, we're, we're in Virginia, right? A lot of, lot of big trucks in this area, right? Yeah. And uh, what do they say about these guys with big trucks? Yeah. Uh, no, tell you what, no help from this crowd. Uh, what, what is that? You just, you're doing this? What is that? Small peepee. -pee. You're so polite. Uh, <laughs> small peepee. -pee. Uh, so yeah, a lot of guys, they say small peepee. -pee. And, uh, so you know what car I just bought? I bought a Prius, so yeah, you know what that means. I also have a small PP, but uh, I can take it 500 miles on one tank, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll take this tiny PP down to whatever town is, I don't, I don't know what towns are nearby, but you guys, you guys get that's what would happen next in that, you know? What's up? Peterburg. 
Petersburg? Peter, Peter? Okay, all right. Are you going up later? Are you performing later? No, 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 yeah, yeah, good thing. Okay. Uh, okay thanks for coming out. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I just started working out, you guys can tell, and uh, thank you. I'll, that was another joke. I'll just tell you, you know, I'll just tell you guys where the jokes are. No sweat, you know? When you work out, they tell you to take protein powder. You heard this, right? They say that'll build your muscles. I do that, uh, but it's not working for me. I keep spilling it all over my apartment. But the roaches are getting huge. <laughs> They're monsters. I've been given uh, the signal to leave, thank God. And uh, before I go, I will, I will now promote my social media so I can stop playing rooms like this. And uh, also, I have a show next week at a Chuck E. Cheese. So, uh, yeah. thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm driving. I, okay. <laughs> I'm on all those things. I'm at Party with Lance. So if you're trying to keep this party going, Party with Lance, guys. Listen, I hope you guys get some sex tonight, you know? Judging by the vibe in here, I doubt it. But I do hope for the best. And uh, I'm going to now leave and drive to DC. Please don't follow me, except on the internet. And uh, goodbye. Thanks for letting me swing by. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Everybody. Come on, don't ice them out. We're just south. We're supposed to be polite. We're supposed to be kind. It's called Southern Hospitality. All right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Are you guys ready for your next comic? Yeah. All right, your next comic has not been here in a while or ever. In a while, right? Yeah, who cares? Who's keeping count? Me. Uh, it's D'Angelo Brooks, everybody. <laughs> He's right. Last time it was on like four little scribbles on the wall. <laughs> that dark boy on here. Hey man, you did a nice job, man. You did a nice job with that. Hey man, uh, like you said, my name is D'Angelo Brooks. That's D-E-A-N-G-E-L-O. And yes, I do look this good in person. This ain't just a camera trick. Uh, why the fuck is porn so difficult to enjoy? Let me tell you something. I'm sick of... I'm sick of this shit I'm shifting through on Twitter. Oh, did you did y'all know that Twitter has officially released a statement that is now accepting porn on Twitter? Like I have not been jacking out to this shit for like three years. What the fuck did y'all need that mandate for? That shit is fucking weird. But I'm having a hard time with porn because I'm getting up there in age. I'm 37 years old. You don't have to clap, I'm old. Uh, I feel like I feel like I'm out of the loop. I don't I don't want to be with this young freaky ass shit. I typed in Twitter yesterday love making black people. That's what I like. I like I like consensual sex with a lot of eye contact. Uh, yesterday I watched a, a, a porn on Twitter and it was a, a young man and two lovely young women who were giving him fellatio. That's it. Uh, you know they were taking turns, they were doing their thing, and one woman had the nerve to lift his knees up and start eating on the ass. And I said, you get this shit off my phone. That's the nastiest thing I've seen in my life. How dare he have his knees in the air. That's the problem I had. Get your ass ate in the dark where nobody can see it. Uh, <laughs> I've been going back and forth with that because I've never been asked do I want my ass ate. Uh, I don't know if I feel like I'm presenting too, ma too much masculinity to me be vulnerable like that, but maybe. Uh, <laughs> I work in a restaurant. Has anybody ever, have, ever worked in a restaurant? Uh, yeah. front, front, of the, front of the house, back of the house. Yeah. Morning shift, night shift. Let me tell you something about morning shift. Night shift, eight morning shift. Fuck y'all. Yeah. Every, every night I go to work and there's somebody complaining, oh, morning shift didn't do this. Let's just cut the onions and let's, let's get this going. Uh, the biggest problem with my, my, my career, because I'm a fucking loser, the biggest problem with my career is I have to deal with servers. Uh, if you have never dealt with a server at a restaurant, these are incredibly smart people, but shallow, you know? I had to explain to her one time, ma'am, he's not angry with you, he just doesn't want the extra cheese. Why are you crying? It's 9.30, we have to get out of here. Uh, I have children, I didn't make them, but I'm rearing them, so. Let's show you how God works. Uh, one is in the military. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about our truth, it's cool. Uh, one, one is in fourth grade, fifth grade, I don't remember. 
Uh, the reason why I don't remember because they don't have no names in my house. They just do whatever the fuck age they is. That's when I call them. The 18 year old and the 12 year old. Uh, the 18 year old is very muscular, jockish type nigga. Like he always been football, basketball type of guy. The, the youngest one, I think he got a touch of the autism, man. I'm, I don't know. A touch of the tizzy is what I like to call it. I don't want to. I don't want to be derogative. It's a tizzy. It's a, it's a touch of the tizzy. It's a. I was telling my homeboy earlier today, I had an argument because he was arguing with his grandma at the top of his lungs about something just small. And I'm trying to get him to understand that, hey, as young men, we don't argue with women. We understand that they have feelings and we accept it and we move the fuck on. Lying is what I'm trying to get him to do. You see what I'm saying? Uh, he, he was having an argument and she was basically saying, uh, did you clean your room up? And he said, I did clean my room up. What well, did you take out the trash? I did take the trash out. Did you eat today? No, I didn't eat. And this is when I got pissed off. I said, hey, stop yelling at your grandma. He sat in the chair and he was like, okay. I said, yell at me like that. No, 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 you, you so big and bad, yell at me. Y'all, this little boy looked at me in my face and said, ah, uh, I said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, my name is Dan's Little Brooks, thank y'all. Angela Brooks, everybody, keep it going for a great job. All right, your next comic may or may not be here. He's a teacher at the Faison School for those with a touch of the tizzy. Is James Copeland here? This is the final boarding call for James. Oh, hey, there he is, everybody. Put your hands together, James Copeland. Sorry about that, guys. Had a, a date downstairs with the toilet. Um, hey, I'm starting a company that caters exclusively to boomers. Um, our first product is going to be a bumper sticker that says Nags Head, the two things my wife does best. <laughs> Thank you. You know what really pisses me off about society, guys? Cops always ask you if you've had anything to drink, but they never ask if you've had anything to eat, right? Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, the um, arresting officer didn't buy that point. Um, yeah, unrelated. Uh, can I get a ride home? I, there's something wrong with my car or something, you know. Whatever. Um, have you guys noticed that when women say that uh, they're not wearing any panties, it's considered sexy? But when I say it, the Walmart clerk tells me I have to buy the pants I just tried on. What's up with it? Uh, probably because I was in the children's section. Yeah. Wow, big groan on that. Yeah. I'll keep that in. Um, you know, not everybody knows the politically correct terms for everything these days. Like, I had one of my friends refer to my fiance as an oriental. And, like, I, I did take him aside and be like, hey, man, you know, you can't really say that. Like, oriental is only for objects. If you're talking about people, it's Asian. And he said, well, that should still apply then, since you're getting married to a Sailor Moon body pillow. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding, guys. My fiance is a human. Um, I'm not that much of a creep. Um, but my fiance, she does make a lot more money than me. Um, some people ask me if that makes me feel emasculated, uh, and no, of, of course not, you know? The only time I feel emasculated is when she calls me Jessica while she pegs me up the ass. <laughs> you know, just kind of tickles that itch. Um, I have a loved one that's addicted to nitrous oxide. Um, you know, when you have someone that's an addict in your life, you try to think of positive examples for them to, to go by. Like you say, oh, look at Robert Downey Jr. He got off heroin and became such a bigger movie star. Or look at Elton John, he used to be addicted to coke, but now he's one of the top touring artists in the world. But the only celebrity that's ever gotten clean off of nitrous is Steve-O from Jackass. The guy that got sober and kept punching himself in the balls. Oh, look how well Steve-O is doing. He went on Hot Ones and poured the hot sauce directly into his eyes. Oh, don't you want to do as well as Steve-O? Look, he's flying through the air in a porta potty full of human feces. You know, maybe not the best example, but um, anyway, I use uh, two search engines primarily. I use Google and DuckDuckGo, but I use them very differently. Like the last thing I Googled was Israel UN policy. 
the last thing I duck duck goed was fat slut ass fuck. You know? You gotta say informed and entertained, guys. All right, not a big porn crowd. Um, let me try this next one. I watch a lot of gay porn. Um, yeah, I'm not gay. I just like supporting an industry that's 100% controlled by men. Um, I think we got that and uh, vape shops. And that's pretty much it. Um, you know, these days, you gotta be careful who you compliment. Like, I was at work the other day, and I went up to a woman, and I was like, Stacy, you know, you look great. Like, have you lost weight? Have you been working out? And she had to remind me that I helped pay for the abortion. So, it was a little awkward. Um, don't worry, I wasn't the father. I just love abortion. All right, good crowd. Um, so, you know, I, I noticed you never hear anybody, like, uh, look over both shoulders and say something nice. Like, you never hear somebody go like, I really like the way that immigrants are adding to the character of the neighborhood. You know? You always hear something like, Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. All right, I'll work on that some more, guys. All right, thank you so much. I'm James Copeland. James Copeland, everybody. I, I hope his date survived that abortion joke. Uh, James, just unsolicited. I think the problem was that your hypothetical situation was so detailed and precise. And then your thing that happens all the time was very vague. Okay. All right. Guys, I don't know what killed the momentum. I'm hoping it was James and not me, but we'll keep this thing moving. Uh, your next comedian is a prison guard. And by prison guard, I mean he works in the basement and puts coal into the burner. He's also got a guitar, everybody. Put your hands together for the king of Western country. It's Brian Williams. How you doing, home sweet home? Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it for those other comics. Very good stuff, very good stuff. Oh man, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, lady. It's a very good looking Mexican on stage. Psych, I'm a terrible looking Asian man. Right on, right on. DJ request, don't take requests. So, it's Gay History Month or something like that. Uh, I'm a bisexual man, I don't talk about it enough. Yeah, I'm brave. Uh, I'm a bisexual man, I don't talk about it a lot. I'm kind of semi-closeted. I talk about it in large groups in Richmond, but my parents are blissfully unaware. Uh, it's hard to come fully out of the closet when your parents own it. I'm 35 years old and I live at home. Uh, and the thing about that is like, is anybody, all right, here's the deal. Is anybody familiar with the song Down With The Sickness by Disturbed? Yeah, that's a, that's a good song. I really didn't connect with it when I was a child uh, because I had a good childhood, you know? Play the guitar. It, Eat my asshole. Let me tell this fucking joke, you fucking asshole. All right. So, like, anyway, down with the sickness, I didn't really relate to that song because I had a pretty good childhood. Um, I think I relate to that song a lot more as a 35-year-old man that vapes and lives with his parents because that 50-year-old man has to get on stage every night and scream a song about his mother beating the shit out of him. Cool. It, at this point, it's elder abuse. Uh, <laughs> that's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. I actually wrote a song about not being able to be myself in front of my parents. I'm gonna play it for you now, without further ado. This one's for you, Pops. Oh, 
conservative house with conservative ties. It's really hard to tell my dad that I like guys. He would wonder what happened to me. I saw my friend getting out of the pool. Heard Charlie XTX and thought that sounded cool. Had a dick measuring contest with my best friend when I was 12. He said no homo. It was a little bit of homo. For me anyway. Because I won. Because my dick was hard. His was soft. It was on. Thank you. <laughs> it's a true story. I had a dick measuring contest with my best friend at 12 years old. That was my sexual awakening. Also, I did win. Winners write the history books, guys. Remember that? <laughs> or in this case, wieners write the history books. All right, cool. I'll keep that one in my pocket for later. Um, yeah, so I am bisexual. I've told you that. I have a complicated feeling about it. Um, I don't want to be one of these people that just checks a box for people. I want to be known for more than being queer. Um, but, you know, like, it's, it's hard to explain bisexuality. A lot of people don't understand it. They dismiss us. And it's, the simplest way I can put it is, if a restaurant doesn't have Pepsi, I'll drink Coke. You know? <laughs> Before I suck a cock. Uh, <laughs> got a question for you guys, totally unrelated. Does anybody here deal with drug addicts at all? Woo! All right, cool. You might resonate with this question I have. Why do meth heads offer to clean everything but their own fucking teeth? <laughs> it's almost like you have to put meth in toothpaste to get them to do it. <laughs> Call it something stupid like methamphetamine. Four out of five dentists approved. That's been my time, I'm Brian. As Brian Williams' only friend in the comedy scene, I can tell you, he talks about being bisexual all the time. I don't know what that was. It's literally the only thing he talks about. Sometimes I'm just bending over to pick something on the floor. He's like, I'm bisexual. And I'm like, I've been working out, I guess. <laughs> Uh, all right, give it up for Brian. Uh, not often you see a guy finish a song and realize he still has a minute and a half left. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're going to keep this thing moving, everybody. Are you guys ready for your next comic of the evening? All right. Uh, first time here, everybody, put your hands together for Eugene ZTH. bumped out recently, if I can be honest. I thought that I was reaching age-appropriate milestones at a normal pace, a little fast even. I graduated from college last year. I got my first apartment a few months after that. But apparently, people that I went to high school with are getting married and having babies. And it's insane because there is this person who I knew and she's having a real life human baby that she gave birth to because she got real life human pregnant. And this is a good thing. She's gonna have to take care of this kid for the next 18 years and this is a positive change. I thought it was like, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. Hey, your 40s are gonna be so awesome though. No, this is a positive change in her life, which I can't imagine a baby being a good thing in my life right now. That's insane to me. And also, I'm just gonna say it since no one else will, I didn't know that girls could get pregnant. I thought they called it M-Preg and Boy Preggers for a reason. When I was reading when I was reading Dean and Castiel's supernatural fanfiction on Archive of Our Own, there was no women involved in what they were doing. The reason why guys are so obsessed with like whether they're an alpha or a beta or a sigma is because that's how they have to populate the earth. That's how we have to do it. Women are supposed to be being CEOs that are billionaires and burning down the Amazon rainforest. They do not have time for giving birth to a baby. It's like absolutely absurd to me personally. And the way that I like found out too was the most loser ass way ever. I was 
about to turn, it was two days before my 23rd birthday, and 23 is, I think, the time when, like, time starts really moving a little bit too uncomfortably fast, so I was a little bit bummed out about that. And on that particular day, I had stared at a screen for so long, drawing so much gay, transgender, furry pornography, that I started developing a little bit of a headache. So I wanted to get a little comfortable, and I took off my shirt, and I took off my pants, and I took off my socks, and I got into bed with me and my awesome salted Costco cashews. And I'm eating my Costco cashews, and it's a really good time. I like Costco cashews a lot. I think they are maybe my favorite kind of nut ever. And I am having such a good time that I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go on Instagram and I'm gonna sing a little song about it to all of my friends and then I go online and I can't sing my song about cashews because someone is pregnant, apparently. So I don't get to have any fun and if I were to sing a song about cashews, it would maybe go like this. Cashews, I love you. You're so yummy to me, Costco Salted Cashews, Kirkland Signature brand, it's so awesome. I will never lower my sodium intake as long as you exist, because I love you so much. And I didn't get to do that, and it sucked. I don't know, it seems like queer people of color really are the most oppressed people in the world, can't do anything in this fucking universe anymore, and that's just a true fact. Anyway, um, this fucking stuff. Do you guys like impressions? Yeah! Yay! 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 I love impressions. That's my impression of you guys loving impressions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, here is my impression of someone who is in their 30s, and maybe they're not the best at stand up, but that's okay, because doing something and being bad at it is better than doing nothing at all. Woo! <laughs> Um, TikTok, back in my day, that was a song that Kesha used to sing. Kesha used to, Kesha was an artist, a pop artist in the 2000s who raised to prominence. Her song TikTok came out in 2010, about nine years before TikTok, the app came out. Here's another impression. Uh, this is an impression of a guy who's maybe in his 70s or 80s, and maybe he's not the best at stand but that's okay. Because doing something and being bad at it is better than not doing it at all. Uh, TikTok, back in my day, that was something that a grandfather clock used to say. A grandfather clock. A grandfather clock, it's a timekeeping device. It's big and there's a pendulum that swings to keep all of the things in balance and the uh, onomatopoeia associated with it is TikTok, much like the app, but it came out maybe two or three centuries before we did. Um, you know what, I think that's it. Uh, oh, here's, here's one more. I've been getting into dancing recently. They call this one the running man, because it looks like you're running, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> My name's Eugene CTH, and uh, thank you. <laughs> Eugene ZTH, everybody. Uh, hey, when I'm hung over tomorrow morning, you come do dad jokes for my kids. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm not terrible at stand-up, but I did enjoy the Kesha joke. <laughs> I'm the only white person in their 30s in the room, I suppose. Uh, all right, we're gonna keep the thing moving along, everybody. Your next comic, this is his first time here. I think it's one of his first times doing stand-up, everybody. So put your hands together, be supportive, be kind. Welcome to the stage. CJ! Oh, uh, boy. Well, home sweet home. So as I was coming here today, I thought about this, man. Have you ever had a home sweet home moment? Have you ever drunk grapefruit juice in a Snickers? That is instant diarrhea. Okay. I could not wait to get home, man. Oh my goodness, I'm riding down the street squeezing my butt as tight as I can because that grapefruit juice and Snickers was not filling my stomach. So don't, don't ever do that again, okay? But look, I got a brother, I got a brother, he's on that stuff, man. You know, he's on drugs, right? 
And he'll call me all times in the night. Last night he called me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Hey, bro, cash at me 50 cent. I said, 50 cent, George? What you gonna do with 50 cent? Come on, man, give me 50 cent. That's all I need, and I'll be on my feet. I was like, really, George, man, stop it, man. 50 cent. Uh, that one won't good at all. <laughs> I had to work on that one. Uh, I, took, I took the DNA test. You know, have anybody took the DNA test? The ancestry DNA test? Did anything come back that you were surprised? Nothing, so everything came back? You, okay, well, for me, I took it, as you can see, most of African descent, right? But one thing was off to me. I came back 1% European, right? Now I know we, we all mixed up with all types of stuff, but I was a little shocked. And so I thought about that. I said, well, what part of me could be 1%? You know, I'm tall. The average height of a European is 5'10", right? I got big lips, right? Like, like African descent. I checked down here, right? Ladies, what's the average, what's the average size, ladies? Give or take what? Give me a number. Six seven. Eight. Six, seven? six seven. Okay. Well, I'm well over that, so I know it wasn't that. Then it, then it dawned on me, right? I used to like Star Trek. I used to run around and talk about beam me up, Scotty. So that had to be the one percent, right? Okay. God, all of these are falling. Okay. All right. Let me let me try this one. Uh, oh. Got my joke. Uh, give me a second. Okay, I'm so new at this. Right. Right. Okay, all right. So I drive lift for you. Who are my jokes before already? Anybody? Right now. All right, all right. If you did, y'all watch reruns anyway. I'm sure y'all got a subscription on Netflix at home anyway. So I drive lift, right? And you can pick up some scary people sometimes, right? For example, I was over in Mosby Court. Any Mosby Court people in here? Mosby, any hood people in here? Well, I was over in Mosby Court, right? And I picked up this drug, I think he was a drug dealer, and I'm gonna give you some clues on why. Right, so I picked him up, he came up to the window, and he said, hey, meet me down by the bridge. I said, in the dark? He said, yeah, I'll be right out. Right, now, I'm about to cancel this. I'm like, man, this, this is not cool. I'm not feeling this. But before I could cancel it, he runs out with a big box, all taped up. I said, my man, you want me to put that in the back? He was like, no, nah, man, I gotta keep it closed. I said, okay, cool. So he gets in the car, he makes a phone call. Then he says, excuse me, driver. Like I don't have a name or something. So I look back and said, yes, passenger? Right, he said, what's the ETA? I said, the GPS is two hours and 45 minutes. He gets back on the phone and says, my driver said, we'll be there in two hours and 45 minutes. Meet me at the spot. I said, okay. He, there you go with that driver stuff again, right? The only difference is, I can put him out. It's called in ride. And him in that suspicious box of 95 walking. So look, we get to the location, right? It's already sketchy. I turn around the corner. It's that one light. And that one little dingy black cat walks in the middle of the street and just kind of looks and makes that noise and keep on going. My man said, hey, you didn't see anything, right? I look back, he has me $500. I said, see what kind, sir? <laughs> he said, my man, he said, my man, I said, thank you. You have a safe, free, drug-free night. I said, thank y'all guys. I appreciate it. CJ, everybody, keep going for CJ. <laughs> CJ, I like that you looked at this room and said, anyone here from Mosby Court? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, guy, that guy looks like he patrols Mosby Court. <laughs> and that guy looks like he orders him to do it. No one here looks like they're from Mosby Court. That's crazy. All right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Your next comedian is a surprise drop-in guest. Always a pleasure to have her here. Everybody put your hands together for the very fun of the very talented Apple Brown Betty. All right, we're going to keep things moving tonight. Your next comedian, last time he was here, wowed us all with a magic trick. And he's going to do it again tonight. Tonight, he's brought an assistant. Everybody put your hands together. And she's being paid to be here right now, so really, make sure she earns it. Everybody, put your hand. He's not letting her drink. Isn't that fucked up? Boo him, actually. Boo! He's not even paying her the insurances. Your next comedian, everybody, put your hands together for the teetotaler, Larry Vole.
grosser. This was actually maybe the best that's ever happened. Uh, all right, that was Larry Bowles. I'm so glad Bridget didn't think I ended the show early and turned the music back on halfway through that. Uh, your next comic, hey, he doesn't like quiet comedy. He doesn't even like to be quiet in a movie theater. He wrote that joke. It's Damian Anderson. I didn't write that joke. I don't know what Jake said. <laughs> what's up, my niggas? Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm watching y'all. But y'all have no idea how good it feels to finally ask that question, and there's actually niggas in the room. And y'all did not answer. They, she answered, but you know, the rest of y'all, y'all, y'all wanted the good white people. You know, I'm not mad at y'all. Yeah, yeah, huh? We don't say that word. Uh, <laughs> We say Chet Hanks now. We're just Chet Hanks. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Yeah, y'all, no, I knew it was good white people were here because this is a old, this is a, this is a trick, you know, you learn when you're a person of color, especially black, you know. You know, you walk into a room where you know it's gonna be a white establishment and you're like, all right, let me taste the air. Sniff, <laughs> sniff. All right, no one's gonna lynch me in here. It's good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. This is a good room, this is a good room. Like, I knew, it was, I knew I was safe when it smelled like Cracker Barrel in here, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't even, I've never been to Cracker Barrel because, you know, like, I've never been to Cracker Barrel. I don't even believe it exists. It's like a myth to me. It's like unicorns and student debt. Like, it doesn't exist to me. It doesn't exist to me. No. But, um, white people, I finally understand your problems, though, I think, in a way, whatever problems y'all have. Um, <laughs> Because I am a humble Dallas Cowboys fan, and if I'm a humble one, you know, don't get too hyped, you know what I mean? Because um, I'm realistic, you know, but you, if you know football, you know, like, they're, like, the most hated fan base of all time. So I have to end up saying things like what white people who have, like, Ku Klux Klan members say to, like, other people. We have to say shit like, look, the rest of us aren't like this. This is a bad representation of our community. I'm sorry my grandfather called you a nigger at halftime. I'm sorry my black grandfather called you a nigger at halftime. I don't know why he does that, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But you know, I got an important question though. Important question. Happy Pride Month. Is nigger non-binary? Is nigga non-binary? In fact, I have a way more important question. Who remembers the Wiggles? Mm, my man, my man, my man. Nah, I need to get to the bottom of this. Cause the Wiggles is always weird to me, like remembering back on it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause I watched it when I was in like first grade, you know? And then like, I watched it before school and like looking back on it, I'm like, is that, I hope that wasn't like my like, well, you remember your kid, like your parents would just put on a show just to calm you down? I hope that wasn't my show. Like my parents were like, yeah, let's let like these like grown white dudes serenade this like little black child for 30 minutes so he can calm down, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, one was Asian. 
number? What's your name, bro? Rich. Rich? Are you rich? You're my neighbors, though. You are rich in spirit, brother. You are rich in spirit. You look like you look like you had a really you look like you had a black friend that your father was like strangely proud of for some reason. Like a little bit too proud of, you know what I mean? No, like the exact Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. So your dad really loved your black friend and he wishes you were, you were him, right? Damn, I just I just opened up a deep cut. The opposite of that for me was having like the white friend I could always get away with shit with, you know? Like I always had that white friend, AKA Tyler Bauer, where like I could literally just tell them like whatever I'm doing he, like, as long as I told them I was with Tyler, I was straight. I could say, hey, we're going to skip school, and when the football game later, we're going to streak the game. And then my, parent, my grandparents were like, who are you with? And I'd be like, Tyler Bauer. And they're like, all right, well, do you need fireworks to distract the cops or something? Like, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else a diet psychopath in here? I mean that, like, mental disorders, like... I don't know, like, I know I guess psychopath counts as that, but you know, you're on a list, so remember that. Um, I'm bipolar, which means, you know, I, the way I look at it, I have like two voices in my head, like one's negative, one's positive, but like everybody that's bipolar looks at it differently, they have a different voice. My, my voices are Nickelodeon cartoon characters for some reason, you know what I mean? Like, from the 90s, you know? Like, the positive voices is Donnie from Wild Thornberries, and like, I don't understand what he's saying, but like, he just sat, he just hypes me up, you know what I mean? I'm like, you know what, Donnie? Yeah, I will hit that DMT pin from a stranger. This is a great idea. And then, like, the negative voice for some reason, like, who grew up watching Hey Arnold? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Y'all remember Harold? First, instead of calling me Stoop Kid, he calls me Porch Monkey for some reason. Like, I don't know why my voice goes there. Um, yeah, white people aren't comfortable with that. Um, well, anyway, my name's Damien. That's been my time. Damien, everybody. Let's listen to this. I can't hear it either. That's the problem. But it is making him uncomfortable. <laughs> Boy, you've never been more grateful to leave a drink behind. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep it up. My favorite Hey Arnold character was Jerome. He got his tonsils out, and his voice got deep, and he's like, I don't think girls will like me anymore. All right, your next comic coming to the stage is a great performer. He is truly one of the best comics in the city. In fact, if you don't laugh watching your next comic set, that means you don't like comedy and you don't like Richmond. We're putting it all on the line with your next comic. This is Robert E. Lee's final stand, everybody. Put your hands together for the pride of the South. The general will ride again. It's Charlie Lee Waring. Yeah! I told him racist shit about you. <laughs> Home sweet home. Are you excited after that? Come on. <laughs> hey, I don't want to be political, but that Robert E. Lee guy, I didn't like him. <laughs> I'm against what he said. Uh, I don't know what he said. Uh, my body, my body looks like shit. Um, my body looks like shit. What I mean by that is my torso is shaped like the poop emoji. Uh, just cascading, cascading rolls, tapering off at the top. Like the poop emoji. It's all right, guys. Robert E. Lee would like it. Uh, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, I uh, the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> the ball, the football team, the Baltimore Ravens. Now this is a wild group of guys. Okay. Uh, first of all, first of all, let me talk about Edgar Allan Poe. You guys know that guy, right? Yeah. I think he invented eating pussy. That's neither here nor there, but. You know, he's so depressed, his dick didn't work, he needed something else. Um, 
But the, 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 uh, the football team, the Baltimore Ravens, is na they, they named their football team after the poem, The Raven, that Edgar Allan Poe wrote. Edgar Allan Poe is not from Baltimore. <laughs> he died in Baltimore. He died when he was 40. They saw a dead man in the gutter. They were like, dead at 40. Well, most people who play football get CTE and die at 40, so <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I wonder, well, how come, how come the, the trend of naming football teams after poems didn't catch on? Like, you know the poet, Robert Frost? He's from San Francisco. Why, why, was, why isn't it called the San Francisco The Road's Less Taken? <laughs> You guys know the poet Kid Rock? He's from Detroit. Why don't, instead of the Detroit Lions, why isn't it called the Detroit Battle to Battle to Bang to Bang Diggy 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 Said the Boogie Said Up Truck the Boogies? And I used Kid Rock because I could not think of a third poet. Uh, I'm fucking stupid. Uh, okay, let's. I'll talk about this. I, I feel like I, I'm like at an interesting age. I'm like, you know, I'm like 31, I'm almost 32. I feel like people, if they're too young or too old, they don't know. The internet used to be different, okay? Like on the internet, this was, a, when I was in high school, this was a fun game we did. We would send someone a, a, a link and would say, this is a funny video. And half the time it would be like they got rickrolled. And the other half of the time it was a man shoving a glass jar in his ass and it broke. And that was a funny prank. <laughs> You just send someone a link. It's like, it might be a guy chopping off his cock and eating it, or it could be 80s pop. Uh, but no, because no, that's just, people don't realize, like Facebook used to be full of porn. People don't know that. Before there was parents on Facebook, Facebook was full of porn, right? Like I used to be friends with this guy, this guy I went to high school with. He, po he used to post these videos, right? He posted a video one time. It was titled, if you don't like this, you're gay. Right? I see the name of that video, I'm like, well, I, didn't, yeah, I gotta run the test, gotta see if I'm gay, I click play. The video is these two women taking their shirts off and jamming their tits together. And I hate to be a stickler for the rules, but that is one of the gayest things I've ever seen. <laughs> like this is something, straight guys, we gotta come to, let me talk to the straight guys in the audience, we need to come to a, a reckoning with this. Two women having sex is gay, alright? <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like it, it's counterintuitive, right? <laughs> Two women, that seems more straight than, uh, you know, regular sex. Uh, but women are like negative numbers. <laughs> Me too, it's gay. <laughs> it's okay. No, okay, that's fine. <laughs> you guys are like, no, lesbians are straight, fine. Uh, there's another video this guy posted. The name of the video was She Nasty. I go, that's an interesting title. I put my glasses on. I'm like, let's see here. How nasty is she? <laughs> I hit play. It's a woman. She's in a, she's in a dress. She takes the dress off. The film cuts. She's naked. There's something inside her pussy. I'm like, what's that inside of her pussy, right? I can't tell. The, the, the camera zooms back. I see the woman is having sex with a donkey. I'm like, oh my God. If you've never seen a woman have sex with a donkey, don't. You don't want to. Um, <laughs> I'm against it. But it's a hard thing to see. Your mind can't process it, right? I felt like I was reading an H.P. Lovecraft book, right? <laughs> like, I was like, oh my god, what cosmic horror is this? My mind can't comprehend it. I want to name my cat something fucked up. Oh my god. But no, that's... <laughs> this is my first time doing stand-up. Uh... But the thing I took the most issue with is the fact that he named it She Nasty. That seems like an understatement. I would say she horrific. She diabolical. She commit crimes against God and man. And then, uh, it, does, it doesn't matter if I finish the joke, you hate it, but uh, I'm gonna keep going. Fuck you, it did well before, fuck you. You guys are stupid, I hate everyone. No, Jacob's a good host. This will ruin the show for him. Uh, the show for everybody. Fuck all of you guys. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to ruin the show for Jacob, but all of you are pieces of shit. Stupid idiots. <laughs> Fucking dummies. But the next day, he made a post. He was like, why do you all report my shit? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like it, don't watch. And I, I looked up that guy now, that guy who posted bestiality porn. All of his posts now are like, uh, taking my daughter to soccer practice. <laughs> 
He's a good. So I don't know. So the moral of the story is, if you're in the PTA, you don't know who else is in there. Okay. Okay. My first time. Let's give it up for Jacob. So I tell all the comics, I say, hey man, if you're uh, not dead, clean up your drinks, make space for audience members to watch. Brian Williams leaves an entire fucking guitar sitting on a bench. <laughs> and I said something three times and I gave him an hour. So now it's going behind the microphone and he can stay until I leave at 2 a.m. And then he can clean the goddamn erasers. Great, now Brian's gonna cry at 2 a.m. Uh, all right, hey, I'm with, uh, I'm with Chuck. I think, uh, you know, Ellen DeGeneres, Rosie O'Donnell, Megan Rapinoe, traditional trad wives. Gotta love that about them. Uh, lesbians are straight. <sighs> Let's keep this thing moving. Your next comic. Your next comic. You're gonna love your next comic. Uh, he used to have a big stage name. Then he decided to go by his government. Getting clean or avoiding warrants? We'll find out. It's your next comedian, Scotty Moore. All right. So, Scotty, if she's going to talk that long and do fucking Rain Man math, you should probably mic her up. That would be my suggestion. I mean, I failed algebra anyways, but I would have had a better chance of it to hurt her. All right. We're going to keep this thing moving. Uh, he's going to get AP credit, actually. Uh... The next comic coming to the stage, this is his very first time going up, everybody. He is extremely nervous. So I would ask that none of you make very judgmental faces at him. I would ask that you don't cross your arms and stare him down. And I would really ask that you don't look at his face and project all your own misgivings about your father onto him. Everybody, put your hands together for Just Chad. Man, thank you, New York. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. Hey, I know we're all in close quarters, but don't let the lights fool you. I am white, all right? And if I last these five minutes, it'll be the first time in my life. It, it's nice to be here. Um, it's nice to be anywhere. I'm a recovering alcoholic, so thank you, thank you. This morning was especially difficult, um, you know, but... I used to think I have a, had a problem with alcohol, but don't worry, I'm divorcing her. And, you know, it, when I thought I had one, it's funny, everybody goes out, you know, I've worked in a restaurant my whole life, and when you go out, you know, it's always the people that you're out with that are like, oh, you got a drinking problem. And I said, all right, well, hey, will you marry me? And then I don't have the problem anymore, I'll have a wife. So, anyhow, now we're getting rid of that, but... I'm such a competitive person. When I went to AA, you know, I went the first couple times, I'm like, all right, well, hey, whatever. And I'd go up and they'd give me a white chip and then at the end of the day, you know, I'd leave and be like, all right, well, I'm just committed just for today. And I, with my schedule, I could only go once a week. So the next week I went back and I went up and they're like, hey, anybody want a white chip? And I went up and got my chip again. And the, and the guy's like, did you take a white chip last week? I said, yeah, I sure did, but Bob told a great story about banging two bitches and being really drunk, and I'm like, hey, I'm not letting Bob beat me, so I got another white chip. And it's like, if you want to help an alcoholic, why do you have other ones telling stories about what they should do? And, and it's impossible. So at that point, then I went home and I was like, hey, all right, we can't do this anymore because you're the problem. <laughs> you know, that's what they tell me there. So anyhow, that, that switched after a while. And then thankfully, how many people were excited for COVID? I know I was. COVID sounded great, right? It's like, all right, nobody goes to work. You're gonna get a government check. And then, you know, it's all fun. And then we realized that we were at home with our family, right? <laughs> it's like, shit, I don't wanna be here anymore. So I got infected probably every other week. I had a couple kids, I'm like, Mm, I gotta be in quarantine. I can't do this anymore. So she just took care of the kids, and that that part was awesome, you know. But I, you know, it's uh, it's Pride Month, which I think is great. I'm a um, I'm a first generation immigrant here in Richmond. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm originally from New York. Where? Upstate. Yeah. 
you know, and then I moved down here, and it's, you know, somebody said, you all, and I looked around, I'm like, just me? And they're like, yeah, you all. And I was like, hmm. And then I was like, that doesn't seem to make sense to me. And now the pronoun thing is like, they or them. It's like, I don't, if, if I look at one person and then I say they or them, that there's just the one. I don't. I don't understand that at all. So it's like, how do I get to that point where it's like, all right, they need a, a coke. It's like, you know, somebody's taking two of them over there. It's, it, it doesn't make any sense, you know. So that that's kind of different for me. Oh, sorry. There we go. Just you know, till we're over. But. Yeah, it's a it's a weird phenomenon living in the South as a Northerner. I just don't get the, the dialect from one person to the other at all. But um, you know, back to my wife, and this is it seems like mostly guys here. So guys, let me tell you from a little experience. How many guys date a girl with a dog? How many guys date a girl with a cat? I gotta tell you from experience, what do most women call a cat? Right, there we go. All right, when you're with a woman, it's a pussy cat, right? And what do you want from a woman? Uh, uh, pussy, right? Listen, the only phenomenon that a woman equates to a dog is doggy style. And when you're back there, she's not thinking of you. You're just pushing, and she's thinking of somebody else in your doggy style. I love dogs myself, but what you're going to end up doing, dudes, is cleaning up that dog's shit and not getting the pussy. It's just plain and simple. So that's, that's my time. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's his very first time doing this, everybody. Give another round of applause. It is, it's his first time. It is, it is hard to do your first time and talk about a woman shitting herself while you fuck her from behind. But hey, when you got Chad's skills, you make it all come out. You know, everyone loves a gusher, just not that way. Uh, all right, we're gonna keep tonight's show rolling. Your next comedian, everybody, you're gonna love this guy. This is my preferred fill-in host, whether I'm feeling ill or too much doggy style, I've made a new litter. Uh, your next comic, you all will recognize him, you love him. He's the guy who runs the Basic City show. Everybody, the sole proprietor of Basic City, it is. He's gonna win you back, it's Tyler Bauer. That's right, I beat the 27 Club! I fucking lived longer than Kurt Cobain, Jimi Hendrix, and Janis Joplin! I'm better than them! Fucking Kurt Cobain, he was depressed, he killed himself, pussy! Jimi Hendrix died of vomit? Gross! Janis Joplin died of like a heroin overdose well before fentanyl was invented. That's just crazy. Fentanyl is the Looney Tunes painted brick wall for drug addicts. Anybody on these dating apps? Anybody on these dating apps? You know, like Yahoo Answers? Nobody else is looking for love on Yahoo Answers? What about the Petco.com comment section? 
section. Just going on there leaving a review like the Betterful dog food was great. My pupper loved it. I'm also looking for a life partner that'll hug me and kiss me and be sweet to me. <laughs> Love me unconditionally forever. Y'all know the To Catch a Predator type videos on YouTube where they get on the dating apps, they have someone, they pose as like a 14 year old child and then they meet a dude in like a Walmart and start filming him and they're like, this man's here to meet a 13 year old girl for sex. I think it would be hilarious to pose as like a 35 year old woman on Tinder and they show up to Walmart and you're like, this man's here to meet a 32 year old single mother for sex. <laughs> <laughs> to catch a citizen, I don't know, I'm working on that. <laughs> Drugs, I do like to get ahead of the curve. I like to get ahead of the curve, so instead of doing coke, I just started doing Narcan. <laughs> I wake up in the morning, do a fresh shot of Narcan, and start fist fighting paramedics. <laughs> I've been getting into gaslighting lately. Oh, yeah. It's uh, working for me. <laughs> I think being a magician with an s and kink would suck. <laughs> being a magician with a bondage fetish would suck because you can just break out of the restraints. <laughs> Houdini never came because he was a sex freak and he liked sex swings and shit like that. But he had too much pride as a magician. <laughs> he always broke out of the restraints. He never came, guys. Uh, <laughs> Mission Barbecue, how do we feel about the troops, first of all, in here? Yeah. All right, okay, I'm on your guys' side. Whatever you guys think, that's what I think about the troops. I do think they get a raw deal sometimes. They come back, a lot of them end up homeless, a lot of them can't get benefits at the VA, but thank God they have Mission Barbecue. Mission Barbecue, it's Outback Steakhouse for the troops. <laughs> It's Applebee's for the troops. And I've never been to Mission Barbecue. But I always like to imagine that the names of the dishes are kind of fucked up. Like, hey, come on into Mission Barbecue. Try our IED jalapeno poppers. The cheese will explode in your face. Be sure to come into Mission Barbecue for our lunch special. Try our shell shock sandwiches. They'll leave you speechless. And if you're a true red-blooded patriot American, come in on game day, try our POW pulled pork sliders. You can't escape the flavor. Yeah. I like how you laughed when I looked at you and made eye contact. He did not laugh before I made eye contact. That is a beta male, guys. I'm Tyler Bauer. I love you to death. I, I didn't mean that, by the way. I'm uh, your host, Jacob McFadden. Everybody. He respects the troops. Give it up for him. All right, your next comedian coming to the stage. Very funny, very talented. We are rocking it through the show tonight. Is everyone still having a good time? Yeah, all right, let's check it out. We are getting near the end, so you guys are being rewarded. Be patient, because here comes some of the good ones. Your next comedian coming to the stage. Everybody, put your hands together for... Damien, are you done dancing for Ross? Okay, your next performer has just been danced on. Everybody, put your hands together for Ross! Oh my God, home sweet home, how are we doing? A lot of men up here tonight. Hello boys. Uh, are any of you gay? Are there any gay men? Hell no. Yeah, I can tell. Those jeans aren't cuffed. Are, do you fuck with gay people? You don't discriminate. If that's their thing? Like, it's like people who wear bucket hats. You're like, I don't know, that's their thing. That's fine, that's fine. I fuck with gay people heavy. Uh, I also fuck gay people. Um, hell yeah! Thank you, thank you. Oh, now we get a hell happy yeah. Pride Month. Uh, happy Pride, babies. Um, it's Pride Month. My boyfriend is a fantastic ally. 
Give it up for him. Thank you. Thank you. I know some of y'all aren't clapping because you know who it is. Okay, clap anyways. He's a great ally. Uh, he's also queer. You can be both. You can be both. Um, he's a great ally because when he sends me uh, memes on Instagram, you know, the ones where it's like two animals doing something cute and it's like tag your girlfriend. <laughs> he still sends them to me, but he afterwards puts a little like asterisk and is like partner. <laughs> it's like they, them. He corrects the pronouns. It's real nice. Okay. Oh, not that kind of crotch. Woo! All right. <laughs> Woo! All right. Scratch all my game material. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like God gives too much head. I feel like three is too much. Yeah, any Christians in here? Um, you know, the Godhead. I, oh, shoulder shrug. Yeah, I mean, I'm born again Christian, but. Oh, you are? I believe in karma. Black well, is like, but I believe in karma, so. That's right. Wow. You believe, wait, so. I, what, what you give out is what you get back. Got it. So if I give out a lot of head, I'm going to get at least three back. Oh, and I'm Christian. Oh, hey! I can't hear you at all, sweetie. Okay, um, listen, I relate a lot to one of the Godheads, specifically the Holy Spirit. Okay, I relate a lot to the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, I'm genderless. I'm formless. All right, I'm inside every single one of you right now. <laughs> I'm that I'm that little voice inside your head saying, "Come to Daddy." Uh, thank you. That's a Jesus joke. Um, I don't know. I, I am non-binary. Uh, I feel like gender dysphoria for me is a little weird because I feel both masculine and feminine. You know, so like I'm fine with having tits. Uh, but I felt really upset when I realized that everyone else could measure their dick and I couldn't. Yeah, you're laughing. Sir, have you, have, you're wearing a chain in the back of Prince hat. Have you, you've measured your penis? No, I said something. Oh, okay. Have you measured your penis? Yeah, of course. Okay, so you have. Would any other brave penis owners in here raise their hand if you have measured your penis before? Thank you. Oh, a brave crowd tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am so jealous of you. <laughs> Fuck all of you. Okay. I don't know how long my pussy is. Um, and I'm pissed about it. Okay. So I've been thinking about something I could do. Cause like a ruler's a little tricky, you know? So I figured the most efficient way I could do it is like, um, like, you know, when you check your car's engine oil, like a dipstick sort of situation. Oh my god. Yeah, you know, and then you can get an accurate measurement. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, advertise it as the lipstick. Thank you. Um, she, she'd buy it. Catch me on Shark Tank next week, okay? All right. Um, I think I, uh, I, I started out having gay sex, which is weird. Um, why? Well, because I uh, met someone who wanted to have sex with me and it turned out to be a woman. That's <laughs> how so it goes when you're 15. Um, no, I, uh, I started out having gay sex and I feel like, um, I don't know, it's one of those weird transitions when you go from having sex with women to having sex with men. There's some struggle there, you know, like, for example, apparently he doesn't want you to suck his titties. <laughs> Shocker to me personally. To me personally, right? A titty's a titty. Um, all right, I got the lights, so I will leave y'all with one little itty fucking bitty. Um, I think the gayest demographic in the world is straight men who try to convince me that they're straight. Because they come up with a bunch of weird fucking rules for it, you know, to make them straight. And like, you know, if you're only one vodka crayon away from giving your homeboy sloppy toppy, you're not straight, you're just in the closet. <laughs> Thank you, all right, that's for my time! Thank you. All right, give a rise, everybody!
I was so excited beginning of Raza's set when Raza says, I fuck with gay people. And I was like, I used to fuck with gay people too. But they didn't have school in June when I was growing up. <laughs> That's a classic bullying joke. They had to use lockers to get that joke. All right. Uh, your next comic. Guys, we're moving this thing along. Uh, what is your name, ma'am? I'm, I'm not going to get it. This is the one time. I'm Harmony. Harmony. Nice to meet you, Harmony. I'm Jacob. I host the show. I, 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 thank you. Thank you for apologizing to me downstairs for talking during everyone's sets. I'm so sorry. It's all good. It's all good. But I'm just going to say, if you're going to do it some more, be I'm way more not. aggressive about it. <laughs> just way aggressive. Like, like, do you have like, a knife on you? Like, you know, Would you like to borrow a knife? I'll yeah. give you a knife. <laughs> No, I'm saying, like, just get in and put your thumb in the back of their kneecaps so they fall over in the middle of a joke. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking, I want you to go crawl the god. But not on your next comic. Your next comic is a, is a nice elderly gentleman. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for a, a, an old, old, old man that can't stand up to harmony. It's Brian Mikulak. Woo! Uh, look how long it takes him to get up here with all that dust in his bones. We're having a good night time. We are. What's going on, YouTube? Oh, good, good. Uh, you guys know who Elon, you know who Elon Musk is? Huh? You know who Elon Musk is? Unfortunately. Okay. All right. I have friends who are like really psyched about him. They really like oh, Elon Musk. No, I'm really not. Yeah. Like if you had to change the name of your company for so much bullshit, you know, okay. Okay. Not where I was going, but okay. <laughs> We'll figure it out, we'll get there. Um, yeah, I have friends who are like really, you guys are gonna love this, YouTube guys. Um, yeah, they, they fucking love Elon Musk. Like, he's gonna take us to Mars. Why the fuck, why the fuck you wanna go to Mars? Do you wanna go to Mars? I don't wanna go to Mars, but I think that's one of the closest Sorry, there. kind of inhabitable parodies from planets, because of the water. For you guys digitally, that was very helpful to the joke. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, he, uh, you know he's, he's responsible for the logistics of moving a whole planet. And he doesn't know how many kids he has. He's like, uh, he's like Nick Cannon for libertarians. He just psh, 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 keeps popping out kids. I don't know, like, I don't have a Mars degree. What the fuck am I gonna do? I'm gonna work at the Wendy's on Mars and explain surge pricing to space Republicans? I'm fucked. I'm not built for Mars. Um, yeah, thank you, Elon Musk. Anybody a uh, Twitter fan? You guys missed the old Twitter? There we go. Somebody. You fucking nerds on the internet will know. Um, a lot of fourth wall breaks here. But uh, yeah, I missed the old Twitter. It was, it was fucked up, but it was like the right, it was the right kind of fucked up. You know? It'd be like that kid in high school, you listen to Marilyn Manson, wore a trench coat, but he didn't shoot the school up. You know? I know it's a low bar, but if you don't shoot the school up, that's a good boy to me. I don't know. The, fuck, <laughs> the war on boys. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, now, it, Twitter's, it's, it's all porn now. It's all fucking porn. Um, um, it's, it's so bad, like, you know, it'll be anything. Like, it'll be like a news leak. It'll be like, uh, CIA leaked documents. And the next comment's like, so did my OnlyFans. It's like a petite Asian woman getting destroyed by a power forward. That's a basketball joke. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's so bad, I, I decided, I'm like, I'm not gonna use Twitter in public, you know? Because you don't want to be on an elevator with me, watching porn, you know? I look like a, I look like the rapist on like a teen drama on the CW. I know how I'm dressed, I know what I look like. You don't want that, you know? You imagine I set the scene for you, and I'm like looking at my phone, and then you see me just watching some petite Asian get pounded by a power forward, and I just turn to you like this. That's not a great, you know, you don't want to be in an elevator with that element, you know? Maybe if I was shorter. Then hide it in the corner and don't show up into your phone. Another just and beautiful really, addition. Why, why would anybody give you any help if they're, uh, they're not under 18? Huh? Like, if you're, why would anybody give you help what you're watching, porn-wise, if they're not under 18? I don't know. I mean, if I was watching porn now, that would be a great look, you know? Whoa. 
Uh, whoa. Whoa indeed. All right. Anybody have dogs? Anybody have pets? Okay, great. We like pets. The man's best friend. And you know, we kind of let, you know, the, it's a man's best friend, but we kind of let dogs get away with a lot of shit. Like my best friend's an Indian guy named Jeff. And, uh, Is that your yeah, puppy or your friend? That's a man. It's an Indian man. He's in tech. Uh, but, uh, you know, like dogs do crazy shit. We just let them get away. Like if I cock my leg up and start licking my asshole, I don't know if that'd be a welcome movement, you know? I know a guy recently pulled his dick and balls out, but like, you don't want to see that. Or if like somebody walked up the stairs and I just like bared my teeth at them and just have just, <sighs> you don't want that. But the dogs, the racist to who? To, to, don't say Asians. Okay, I'm sorry, I gotta move on. But uh, <laughs> I think that means a minute. Um, guys, I don't think there's been a mass shooting in a while. Isn't that nice? A what? A mass shooting. I think we've had a little break. Don't answer, don't answer, please. <laughs> there, let's just say that for like the last three weeks, we've been mass shooting free. I love that. Because whenever there's a mass shooting and I go visit my parents, my mom points at the TV and she goes, don't do that. Like, All right, thanks, mom. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I've been around, you know, you've raised me for like 30 years, but it was a maybe for me. It was a maybe. He might do it. All right, I think that's my time. Fuck you, nerds. All right, see you guys. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Is that beer still full? Yes, it is. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, this is, y'all good. I told you, you should have got it right behind the knees. Brian Mikulik, everybody. <laughs> no, actually, what you're supposed to do is hit him with the thorax between their arms. Um, you say the thorax? Yeah, you hit Bugs them. have thoraxes. We're humans. <laughs> no. By the way, I like, I like when he said, you said dogs are racist to who? Yeah, that's what I thought. And I was like, that's not true. Yeah, that's not true. Like, that's not true. Yeah, 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 that's not Yeah, that's like way too complicated. You could just kick someone in the dick. If you kick someone in the dick, you debilitate them. It's pretty easy. All right, your next comic. Uh, your next comic uh, wrote a poem for his intro. Uh, he's the one you call Dr. Feelgood. He's the one to make you feel all right. He's the one they call Dr. Feelgood. He'll be your Frankenstein. Everybody, welcome the pharmacist comedian, Rick Yeager. Woo! Her name's Harvey, or she's available? Yeah. All right. So, I was brought up in a family of six kids. Yeah, my mom and dad were crazy. They were very loving parents. Uh, what I'm trying to say is my parents really like to fuck. I guess that's where I get it from. But, uh, so I was thinking about a summer vacation we took back in the early 70s. I was about, I don't know, 13 at the time. Uh, we were staying at a uh, campground in North Carolina. And, uh, <laughs> all right. And my dad got lost going back to the campground after dinner one night. We ended up in front of this drive-in movie theater. So we looked at the marquee to see what was playing, and the only thing on the marquee was a title of a movie and a time. So it was like, The Wild Ones, 8 o'clock. New Sheriff in Town, 10 o'clock. So we, we went around to where you pay, and my dad said, what are these, westerns? And the guy said, what it is is 10 bucks for the car. So we paid, went around, found our spot, hooked the speaker up, and they started running the coming attractions, right? Now the very first preview they showed was for a movie called Deep Throat. Yes, you got it. My dad had mistakenly driven his entire family to the porno driving. As soon as the preview started, my mom is like, Tom, start the car, we're leaving. Meanwhile, my brother and I are hanging our heads out the window trying to get a better look. Because up until this point, the only naked ladies I had ever seen were in the pages of magazines back at my friend's house. But these ladies were alive and 
doing things I had never seen before. Not only that, but they were huge. They were 30 feet tall. You know, for the few minutes it took us to turn around and get out of there, my dad had become my greatest hero. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, so, when I was a kid, my grandparents used to come and visit. And whenever I'd ask my granddad if he wanted to have a catch or do anything physical, he would just say, I'm tired. And I didn't get it when I was a kid, but the older I get, the more I understand where he was coming from. Because I'm tired all the fucking time. I'm tired in the morning, I'm tired when I go to bed, I'm tired at work, I'm tired at home. The only time I'm not tired is having sex. Hell yeah. But I had a dream. Yeah. So I had a, I had a dream that my, my granddad came to visit me from heaven, and he uh, and I asked him about heaven. How how was heaven? And he said it's it's great. The only problem is whatever technology that existed when you die, that's all you get. You don't get any of the new shit that comes along after you die. So I said, well, let me show you some of the stuff they've come up with since, you, since you've been gone. And I showed him my laptop and said, you know, with this you can contact anybody in the whole world. You can answer any question uh, that you ever had. And let me show you this one thing. And I brought up a porn site. And I said, you can watch pornography anytime you want, for free. And he thought that was pretty cool. So I, I said, okay. So uh, the best thing he liked was the new TV sets that they have now. Uh, because I put on a baseball game, and he used to watch baseball on a little 12 inch black and white set. But these new sets, you know, they have the, the white box on the, on the screen where you see what's a strike. The umpires still fuck it up, but at least you can see. So I excused myself. I, I put a baseball game on for him so he wouldn't get bored. And uh, excused myself to the restroom. And I came out of the restroom, and my, de my granddad was gone. And I looked around, and my TV's gone, my laptop's gone, my phone's gone. And I said, no! And that's when I woke up. But it was such a realistic dream that I had to run downstairs and make sure my, all my shit was still there. That's my time, guys. Thanks. Rick Yeager, everybody! Hi! We're getting near the end of the show. We're bringing up some real hot fire here. Your next comedian just started a brand new room that happens every Tuesday. I went, it was great. It's, you know, it's great if you like bars that are clean, that uh, have uh, clear draft lines, the kitchen staff passes inspections, all that. If that's what you're into, that you play, I didn't say it, but I didn't not say it. Uh, your next comic, very funny comic, very talented, so glad I went to the room tonight. Great success, everybody put your hands together for Emily Erblin. Yeah! Thank you so much, Jacob. 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 Um, I have a question for you guys. I have a question to start off. Do you guys think all flowers are clumsy or just the oopsie daisy? Might be all of them, it might be all of them, I don't know. We don't give such insulting nicknames to the other ones, I don't know. Um, you guys, it's Pride Month. Is anyone gay in here? Yeah. There's gay folks in the room? Cool. 
Cool. I, uh, I thought I was bisexual. That's right, I thought I was bisexual, uh, but then that third time was just too good. I had to keep going. Am I right? You know, you're smart. He got it. Uh, he totally got it. He totally got it. He totally got it. He totally got it, you guys. Um, I think self-defense is really important. Um, I'm a woman. I think self-defense is really important. Anyone else? I think everyone should be able to defend themselves. Um, whether that's with their body, whether that's with a weapon, you know, we should all be able to stand on our own two feet and confront dangers when they approach us. Am I right? Yeah. That's right. The other day I went to a, uh, I went to a self-defense seminar. I thought it might be a good idea for me, sharpen up my skills, you know, be able to stand on my own two feet in case danger approaches me. Uh, and the way they had it set up was pretty interesting because, you know, they had Taekwondo masters, they had karate masters, they had people doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu, right? Uh, and they had all different types of action stations all around the room and people waiting to get demonstrations on these self-defense actions, right? So there was like a kicking station, right? A chopping station, right? There's like a throwing station for when you throw someone over your body, am I right? There's like a station for that maneuver where you step on their toe and then you kick them in the groin. But me, I was really interested in learning how to punch somebody. So I went up to the instructor and I said, I said, I said, I said, where's the punchline? <laughs> Thank you everybody. Thank you everybody. My name is Emily Erbland. Um, I'm a bartender. I love tending bar. Um, it really makes me happy because people tell me their secrets. People tell me their secrets. I serve them drinks and they think I'm trustworthy. They look me in the <laughs> eye and they say, I'm cheating on my wife. And I message her on Facebook. Um, that's right. Uh, not only am I a bartender, you know, you know what they say? They say you die a bartender or you li live long enough to become a bar manager. And I'm 26 now, so I manage the bar. Uh, which is cool, it's cool, uh, but what's interesting is I'm privy to all sorts of bar management conversations. So right, like I'm in this group chat that's all about ordering. And it's like, what beer should we order? What food should we order? And today, my kitchen manager says, oh, I just ordered a batch of coffee. Columbia's finest is on the way. But I thought, he said, Columbine's finest is on the way. So I wrote back, oh, are we adding school shooters to the cocktail menu? This is a pun about cocktails. You only get it if you're an alcoholic and order expensive drinks. Uh, but I was really happy to tell it to you. That's right, that's right, that's right, everybody. I was in high school once. Were you? <laughs> I, I was once, I was once in high school, and I was kind of a prude. I went to church, I went to church, not once, not twice, thrice a week for different uh, activities. So I was kind of a prude, and I didn't really want to drink in high school. So when I was invited to my first high school party, I was really excited, but I decided I didn't want to drink anything that was there. I didn't want to drink the beer. I didn't want to drink the liquor. Um, so I was kind of nervous to go. I was kind of nervous to go, but when I showed up, um, I talked to the host, and they said, um, there's a keg of beer over there. They said, I stole some vodka from my parents' liquor cabinet. It's over there. and. I made this really delicious non-alcoholic drink. It's in a bowl over there, but a lot of people are into it, so there's kind of a wait to get to it. And I said, oh, really? Where's the punchline? master of the setup, and it's true. Your next comic 
You're gonna love this guy. Somehow, he does five minutes of comedy without ever doing a single setup. Everybody, put your hands together for the tornado, Monty Giles! Oklahoma! Hello, 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 hello. Uh, hi, are y'all family? Yeah. Son? Yep. Uh, second boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, my first boyfriend. First or second? Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's cool as fuck. Hell yeah. If that's actually your son, this whole thing's weird. It's not like a funny, this is a joke thing. That's insane. Cool. Uh, I'm a teacher. Uh, I'm, I'm a teacher. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's very true. Thank you so much. I hope you're in a school shooting. He also <laughs> I hope she's the one who's like, ah, and then before she can even finish the scream, just that's what guns sound like to me in my head. Thank you so much. Hell yeah, she's like, yo, fuck that bitch. I've had to listen to her all night. She reminds me of my sister. She can suck a dick. <laughs> No, that's cool. But no, I'm a teacher. I'm an English teacher. I teach middle schoolers. Middle schoolers are the worst fucking human beings ever. They suck shit. They just inherently suck shit. Like, they shouldn't own credit, and I'm glad that they don't. But they're funny as fuck. You know what I'm saying? And I'm of the belief that I'd rather hang out with a funny, dumb motherfucker than a smart, like, unfunny person. Like, I have this one kid. She's a black lesbian, and that's not her name. And she'll... She'll be in arguments with people and she says the most fucked up shit. Like she was in the hallway and she had an argument with this boy and it got heated and she looked at him dead in his eyes and said, keep talking shit and I'm a sizzle your bitch. Give her a diploma. Like that's the best thing you can ever say at that age. I'm gonna sizzle your bitch. She can't spell scissor. She failed her spelling test. She doesn't trust silent letters. She told me that. That shit's crazy. Uh, what do you think of... Sir, have you ever made love to a virgin before? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Wasn't it weird? Yeah, the farmer broke it. The farmer broke it? All right, buddy. I don't know what weird bitch you're trying to do in your head. Can I get a human being, please? Also, with your legs up like that, are they bent? Because you look like a little, like a grown man on a little boy leg. That's just very... From my perspective, it just looks like you're about to come out and just... Throwing people off. Hell yeah. Oh, that's your thing? You want to be a dick? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm gonna, wait, is that your wife? I'm not gonna, I don't believe anything you say. Yes, he is. Huh? He is, yeah, I get it, you're gay, haha. -ha. Ma'am, is that a friend with benefits? Are y'all all actually fucking, I really need, cause y'all all look alike somehow? I arrested them. You arrested them? Now he's a cop. A cab, everyone. All cops are bombing at crowd work. Cool, you did it, sir. You, you ruined my pace. Do you feel good now? Is your penis hard? <laughs> Fucking pedophile. I don't know. I don't get virgin love. I, I, I got head from a virgin once, and I'd much rather would have had her sacrifice for a satanic ritual, you know what I'm saying? Instead of that virgin head, I would have much rather given it to a witch so she could restore her youth. <laughs> Getting head from like a hundred-year-old witch? Bro, mind-blowing. I need a magic reference there. That's what that's what'll help that one out. Let's see. Uh, I go. I, I like. I like the level of dumb I am. I like. I think I'm. I'm dumb enough and smart enough. I can open a checking account, but like things are still like magic to me. Like there's no reason I should know anything about science. I don't need it. You know. It's like I don't need to know how magnets work. Who gives a fuck? But like I just know that when I go to the CVS and I do this with my hands, I feel like a wizard, and that's cool. Thank you. Hell yeah. What's your name, ma'am? I'm gonna eat your ass after this show. You are so supportive. I have friends. Does that make you happy, silly man? Piece of shit. I call white day. <laughs> Sir, I'm gonna fuck you after this show. You win. Yes. You win. With your 750 credit score, you piece of shit. I need to stop going back over here. Uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna help me? Hello, black man, beat up this white guy for me. Huh? And now he's black, do you hear that? He's making fun of us. You're gonna throw it at him? Hell yeah, dude. You should sound him, like just shove it in his dick hole. Do you think, God play 
like pr- so many pranks on Adam and Eve. Like, do you think that do you think that Adam was pissed when he realized that when he took out his rib to make Eve that he could suck his own dick now? And then there's just a person there. And like God didn't even make Adam hot, you know? Imagine being the first person on earth and then you're the first person around the first person with tits and pussy. And then you're and then the third person comes and then they're hotter than you and then you're the first cuck in the world. Cool. Anyways, virgin pussy's weird. And sir, what's your name? Chad. I hope your kids get sick. Please, my name's Monty Giles. Give it up for your host. Monty Giles, everybody. The first time anyone's threatened to eat someone's ass on stage. It is a threat. I mean, legally, that's a threat. But... I don't know, that might be a threat you want to see through. All I know is if she calls in the ticket, he has to do it or he has no honor. Ball's in your court. You guys are settled? Okay. Because if you want, you can make him eat your ass. Yeah, call him out on it. Hey, you gotta eat your ass. I'll put him up at the end of the show. He can eat your ass in front of everybody at the end of the show. It's Pride Month. Okay. Hey, you know what? Since it's your ass, I'll defer to you. All right, let's keep the show moving. So there, my wife will hate that sentence. Please delete that. It's one sentence. That's all I want you to leave tonight. Uh, all right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Your next comic. Hey, do you guys like America? Yeah, do you like the military industrial complex? No. Okay, never mind. Hey, your next comic doesn't have a day job. Your next comic is just a regular guy who works in an auto body shop or something. He has no rank and his insurance is paid for privately. Put your hands together for unremarkable standard American Chris Sipple. At ease. At ease. Everybody, we can lower our flags, our truck nuts, half mass. Our president was charged 34 times. I don't even think he can count that high. He looked over at his lawyer and said, what is 34 counts? Does anybody like knock-knock jokes? Yes. Who's there? <laughs> yeah, knock-knock. Who's there? Who's there? Never mind. We can't do it on a Boeing airplane. There's no door. You know, it would have been a bright idea if the submarine people were like, hmm, last year, maybe if we would have had Boeing build our fucking submarine, we would have been saved. Just like Jehovah Witnesses knock on my door, I don't answer that door. No one was knocking on, no one was answering that door either. Did anybody see that Mike Tyson was going to fight Logan, or Jake Paul? They're, they're both stupid looking, so I get it mixed up a little bit. Did anybody see that they called the fight off? Yeah. So do you remember when Logan Paul had that YouTube video in Japan, the Japan Suicide Force, where a lot of people died and he posted it on YouTube to get money? I think that they should move the, the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight there to the Japan Suicide Force because it is suicide to fight Mike Tyson. One Logan Paul story started, one could end. Recently, Chesterfield County... Uh, police department was shutting down a bunch of massage parlors, but they took them a while because there's a lack of evidence until they sent an undercover detective in and he came out with the evidence on his leg. Not have to shut it down. <laughs> um, speaking of, uh, I've, I've done this joke before, but it's so fitting now at this point. Trump raised like a hundred something million dollars for his guilty verdict. I think New York could use another plane crash anyways. And we, we've already seen, yeah, well, you know what, Bush already clarified that theory. It only takes one plane, one tower, right? He has a hotel there, insurance fraud. Let's go, he can pay for the rest of it. Not a big winner, apparently. But OJ died, so that's a winning thing, right? We know he was guilty. The old saying, uh, born by the sword, died by the sword. He was born of cancer in July, he died of cancer, ass cancer, that's pretty funny to me. He also got Ron Goldman, Ron Goldman's throat. Ron Goldman was also a cancer. Ron Goldman got that ass. Does anybody have childhood trauma in here? A lot? Anybody? No. None of y'all had childhood trauma? You don't count. There you go. 
Uh, it all starts young for us. Mine started in my mom's womb when my dad put uh, God through his uh, Walkman, the headphones up to my mom's stomach. But I can at least tell you this, that a punch inside the womb and outside the womb still feels the same. That's what, yeah, that's what my mom did too. She's like, oh, and then, yeah. <laughs> Uh, how much time is left? We're... Oh, there you go, there you go, guy from the peanut gallery. <laughs> you got shit, two? Two minutes, two fucking... Um, I feel like if Jesus had to do a crosswalk in modern day Richmond, he would get killed and by a single person texting and driving and he would die by that sin instead of dying for our sins. That one didn't go as well as I thought. The, uh, does anybody, did anybody ever as a kid want to be a pirate, ever? Yes! Yeah. Yes. Yes! Really? Yeah! Hell yeah, let's go, okay. So I feel like when, I feel like when they were pirates and robbed at least three ships, they were don the eye patch. I don't think everyone had an eye patch problem. And then after they robbed five ships, they were able to get the parrot, but they couldn't feed the parrot until seven ships, and then they could feed that parrot crackers. It's probably want a cracker. I'd ride that wave, because I want the cheese cracker to cheese it. I'll end it here. Uh, let's see, last joke. In the military, I had to do some helicopter training, and everybody, uh, everybody prays to their individual god or god. The guy that I used to worship was Kobe. I just say Kobe's name three times, and I know I'm safe. <laughs> Fucking shooting. Relax. It's been long enough. I'm good. Chris Simple, everybody! Come out of Chris Simple. Hey, I didn't want to ruin it earlier, but that guy's an American hero. He fights for you. Okay, well, it's J.G. Wentworth. Y'all sing the fucking song. This guy goes overseas for you. You don't do nothing. All right. Can't even get applause for Chris after the fact. Uh, all right. Hey, your next comic, uh, he is here. Uh, he's, he's a foreign comic. He's here from Ireland. Uh, we're happy to have him. Everybody, uh, put your hands together and have a crake. Did I do it right? Okay. Time for the wee comedian of E. Tawari. How are you guys doing? I'm not Irish anymore, I'm Turkish. Uh, they've been calling me Turk of E recently. No, we have not. No, everybody's, yo, you can touch most of this stuff, by the way. Did you guys know that? <laughs> All of that shit's touchable. Wait, uh, dude, you're gonna have to bear with me, dude. I had Instagram open. Uh, <laughs> All right, so I've been, follow I've been following this dude. I've been following this dude on the uh, streets at night. Um, it never works, dude. You know, I've been thinking, I was thinking this the other day, uh, like the worst thing, like for me, the worst thing to happen would be like, if I'm at a show and I tell like a really shitty joke and like nobody laughs and then everybody in the room gets shot up. How awful would that be for me? <laughs> that would suck, right? No. I follow this dude on Instagram. Uh, he's a uh, like he's got a Texas Longhorn, which is a type of cow which got like big long horns, thus the name. Uh, and like all he does, what he does is like he shows you like how he feeds it, how he like cleans it, like how he hangs out with it. They're like best friends, right? But if I love it, I love watching it. But if you scroll a little bit down in the comments, all the comments are like, "Yo, what are you gonna do with his horns when it dies, man?" Like, what are you gonna do with this things when it dies? Which is fucked up, right? Cause like, I love my mom, right? You wouldn't come up to me and be like, yo, what are you gonna do with her when she dies, man? It'd probably a fucking lampshade or something. But we'll cross that bridge when we get into it. Do you guys know what you wanna be when you die? Like, what kind of product? <laughs> Anyone here getting buried when they die? No? Good, I like that, dude. Getting buried is like an environmental disaster. 
you know? Like, I, cause like, you know how like living people like to do shit? Dead people don't like to do shit like that. I like coming out here and like talking to you guys. I like going to, dead people don't work, bro. They don't file W-2s, they get no tax returns, dude. Dead people are just dead. And we give up so much land to these people and you can't even have sex with the dead people. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going, dude, and just shit never works. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> you know how they have like organ donor cards? So organ receiver cards, all right. As in, like you get to stick your dick in a dead person, not that they would do it to you. Um, <laughs> anywho, I got I got a lot of great ideas like that. I I really do think like I'd be a, I'd be a great leader. <laughs> I find myself incredibly inspirational. I feel like I'm a guiding light to a lot of people. Like I got so many ideas, like the dead people thing. I came up with that on my own. I got another one. Like, you know how there's like homeless people and it's, it sucks that they're homeless. It doesn't suck that homelessness, or no, it sucks that homelessness exists. Dug myself into a hole. Um, <laughs> no, I, do, I, 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 I like, all right, let me rephrase that one. Dude, this is gonna go off the rails real quick. All right, so I do enjoy, no, I like, I don't like, I don't like homelessness, but like I'm cool with like the homeless. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, that's not a sin to be homeless. It's not their fault, Emily. Sometimes people just come on rough times, you know? <laughs> but I got a way to help them. We give all the homeless Twitch. And then you could just donate five dollars to them, see what they're getting about to, like throughout the day. I'd love that. <laughs> um, any uh, uh, anybody here uh, get hit as a kid? Yeah. Yeah, oh, dude, I knew that, dude. Like a room full of white people, dude. <laughs> anybody here fight their dad? Yes. Yes. That's the white side of you, Monty. <laughs> I bet it was, dude. That's like a that's white people's bar mitzvah. That's how you come of age, dude. Huh? What about bar mitzvahs? <laughs> <laughs> no, I used to get hit. My uh, my mom used to hit me. My mom is a uh, four foot eleven Indian lady, uh, and she used to hit me. So like when she first started, when she first started hitting me, it used to hurt like a lot. But then like as I got older, I got bigger than her, so it didn't hurt anymore. Which is the re so I started just doing like whatever the fuck I wanted, you know? Uh, which is the reason that you shouldn't hit your kids because there's nowhere to go up from there, right? Now you gotta shoot this kid in the head to send a message, right? All right, well, that's been my time. Thank you guys so much. Give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. Abhi Kawari, everybody. He is right. You can touch this. That's incredible. I didn't know. Uh, that was weird. Harmony just ran by and I was giving a V the light and, and I went, ah, and she went. I didn't know. It was that easy. I could just give her the card. Uh, guys, we are down to our final few comics of the evening. How are we all feeling? Okay, now let's lie to me and pretend we're feeling better. Hey, how are you guys feeling? Yellow shirt. I'm not letting this shit go. How are we feeling? No, I want a woo out of you. Give me a woo. Woo! Thank you. I'm a good dad. Everyone can see. All right, your next comic coming to the stage is the loudest performer in the city. He's also our gayest comic tonight. Here to headline our Pride Showcase. Everybody, put your hands together for the Carnival Barker. Why did you ask me to intro you this way? It's not working. It's, it's Will only if it's a minor. Oh. Yeah. This is awful. This is hateful. You're a bigot. All right, everybody, it's Will Bigot. Keep it going for Jacob and the best. And the best introduction I've ever gotten. Holy shit, I feel so weird. <laughs> 
keep it going for Jake, everybody. He conceals carries. He's a good father. And keep it going for V. He got hit as a kid. He's very inspirational. I remember doing Rowdy Powder with him at like 2 in the morning in his basement. He was just like, yo, dude, I am so good at talking. I should do a TED Talk on talking. <laughs> Silver thought it was funny. Come on, you had to be there doing coke. It was a time. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, V was talking about uh, getting hit. Did anybody here get hit? Rich, did you get hit? Oh, that's not good. You don't remember. Oh, you got hit hard. <laughs> I never got hit. My dad just shook the shit out of me. You know what I mean? Yeah, Sam, you smiled. You got brain damage. My dad didn't respect me. He was just like, why are you normal? Like, you know, just stuff like that. Normal stuff. Oh, boy. Uh, I was definitely, yeah, normally I do this joke. I normally do this joke about how I have a big butt. I don't want to do that one today. Everybody's heard that joke a million times. But does anybody here have a big butt? Any big butt people? Hell yeah, one brave person. A couple of liars up here. I'm looking at you, yellow shirt. Uh, he got a woo out of you. I'm going to see that dunk tonight. <laughs> No, I normally do a joke about having a really big ass, but I learned my lesson because I was doing a bar show a week ago, and I was going through the joke of like, I have a really big ass, and then some guy in the audience was like, show us. And I was like, ah, oh, goddamn, I really gotta quit this job at Paper Moon. I really gotta, I get, I get, you know, I keep going back for that sweet, sweet stripper cash. You look so happy. I'm so sorry, sir, I'm not a stripper. I wish I was for you, though. You looked like you're so elated. I know. It's uh, Pride Month. How about that, friend? You like Pride Month? Clap it up for Pride Month, everybody. Hell yeah. Righteous. It's also for this, oh, I don't know if you all know, but it's also Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. Nah, fuck that bullshit. Boo that shit. Boo Mental Health Awareness. Mental Health Awareness. Boo Men's Mental Health Awareness. I want more true crime podcasts. I'm wrong talking life. No, no. I don't give a shit who you are. I'm trying to tell a joke and I've been sitting here for three fucking hours chugging Mr. Pibb. Please do not talk to me. Holy I mother of Christ. Too. Don't please. Oh my God. I really want to actually work on my jokes. <laughs> I hate you so much already. I love you. I really don't like any of this. Oh boy. I guess I'll keep going. Uh, pride flag. Pride month, everybody. Do you like the pride flag? Yeah, your name? Pride flag. Oh yeah. Going right behind you, Brian. Right there with you, brother. I'm a big fan of the Pride Flag. If you don't know, Pride Flag, it's like the iPhone. They update it every year. It's wonderful. There's always a new version coming out. I know, it's like so much fun. You never know what's coming next. Also, I don't know if you all are aware of this, but every gender orientation has their own flag. I don't know if you guys know that, but every gender orientation gets their own flag. Duh. And oh my God, buddy, straight people in the room, have you guys seen the straight Pride Flag? It's a pickle. No, it's not. <laughs> Please stop. God damn, I hate you. <laughs> okay, wow, I'm getting so weird now. But no, I don't know if you ever, have you ever seen the straight pride flag, friend? No. That's okay. I think it was designed by gay people because like when you look at the pride flag, it's a beautiful rainbow. When you look at the trans pride flag, it's a lovely teal and pink. And then you see the straight pride flag, it's just three shades of gray. <laughs> I know, right? Big gay people are like, yeah, straight people, you can have a flag, but no one will see it on a cloudy day. Modernism. I hate you so much. <laughs> God, I thought we were going to be okay when that drunk blonde lady was gone, finally. Uh, it's okay. It's all coming up well. It's all coming up well. I'm working through it. I'm mad at my parents right now. I'm not, don't worry, friend. I'm not mad at you. You're a good guy. You're just coming out. You're hanging out. I love you, dude. I'm sorry. I'm mad at my parents right now. Anybody else mad at your folks? Anybody else mad at your parents? My parents hate me more than you do. That's okay. I'm sure they're horrible, too. <laughs> That's okay. I'm really mad at my parents right now because I don't know if anybody else has to deal with this. Anytime I'm expressing a conflict in my life to my parents, my parents always take the other side of the argument. Has anybody ever deal with that shit? Yes, yeah, Sam, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I was talking to my parents on the phone, and I was explaining to them how I might be losing my apartment. And my parents were literally like, well, Will, it's hard being a landlord. <laughs> I know, right? It was wonderful. But I shouldn't have been shocked by that response, because even when I was a kid, even when I was a kid, I'd come home crying. I'd be like, Mom and Dad, all the kids were really mean today at school. And they'd be like, well, Will, you're very weird. <laughs> you read books about taxidermy. You talk about Naruto. Maybe later. Nerd. Alrighty. Thank you for bringing me. Give it up for that guy. I'm sorry if I made you mad. I'm sorry. Sir, you're you're, you're cool. Woo! Will Miner, everybody. Give it up for Will Miner. Set the hand. A couple people asked me about that intro. Will told me two weeks ago. He said, "You don't do mean intros for me anymore." And I said, "I can do it." 
I can fix that. Anyways, uh, let's all remember that Will can be found on a list. All right, we're going to keep the thing moving. Guys, we're down to your final three comics. And I'm happy to say we have some of your best comics in the city for your final three comics. Are you guys ready to head into a triumvirate of comedy? Okay, half of you are her friends, so like, let's pretend like you actually are ready. Are you guys, it's Grace. Are you guys ready for the triumvirate of comedy? There we go, yeah, okay. Your next to kind of stage, everybody put your hands together. They're in front of the main table, that's Grace Boyle! I don't know how to feel about the fact that Jacob was nice to me in that intro. She fucks children! <laughs> Thank you. It's how I feel like with one of my coworkers, where it's like, I know that she hates me because she's really nice, but she's like a cunt to her friends. Anyways, uh, happy Pride Month, everybody. Shout out to my gay friends for talking through my set. Thank you. You heard it before, so it's fine. Um, yeah, Pride Month, who's, who's gay? Any gay here? Nice. Shout out to my friends. I also gay. By choice. Yeah, you know, like when a, when a Republican says that sexuality is a choice, so you know that they're bi and just choosing straight. You know. It's like, it's like I still have straight thoughts sometimes, I just don't act on them. Cause that's a sin. Okay, that's fucking gross. Um, this is fun. I'm so glad I'm still here right now. I got so high from smoking a V's weed. I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, anyways. Yeah, I, um, should I tell my jokes that a lot of you have heard before, or should I talk about things? Things. Okay. Um, so I work at a, a nail salon, uh, which is cool, because I spend most of my day uh, touching people's feet. Yeah, I thought it would humble me, because I have a bit of like an ego problem. Um, but then I thought about it and I was like, when you think about it, like, Jesus washed people's feet. So basically I'm God, you know? Um, cool, this is fun. I love riffing, I love riffing. Um, uh, but yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I it also makes me feel like Jesus because there's a lot of like sinners that come and get their nails done. There's a lot of like like evil people, like bad people. You know what I mean? Like you know when you meet a rich person who has no awareness of like other people not being rich. You know? Good comment, thank you for that, very insightful. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, like one time this mother and daughter were in there and they were talking about like such crazy rich people shit and I was like, okay, you know, to be fair, maybe, you know, they're just talking about their lives. They don't realize how unrelatable it is. You know, they're catching up. But then one of them said the words penthouse and Range Rover in the same sentence. And I was like, you could have said apartment and car, you know? <laughs> While someone else is like touching your feet, you didn't, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> um, someone else, a lady at the nail salon the other day was like, uh, she was very pregnant and she, <laughs> You're right, Abby. Pregnancy is hilarious. You know how that happens. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, but uh, she told me she was like, oh, I'm having a boy. And uh, based on the due date, I'm not sure if he's gonna be a Gemini or a Cancer. Thank God. And I was like, um, I'm so sorry for your loss. Are you sure it's not too late for an abortion? Thank you. Uh, shout out to the Cancer and Gemini men. Um, I think that I, no, let me let me tell one joke that's actually good, so that you know that I'm good. Um, that most of you have also heard before, but I'll tell it anyways. Um, one time, this guy was going down on me, and I could feel his teeth. Yeah, they were like bumping and scraping, and I was like, how the fuck am I getting toothy head as a girl? You know, it felt like those videos where a man will do like a period pain simulator. And he's like, oh my God, I had no idea how much pain you guys have to endure. I'm gonna respect women now. Yeah, that was me, except I got one toothy blowjob and now I'm a men's rights activist. <laughs> Oh, so fun. Uh, I picked Grace Moyer. Let's get Jacob back up here. Grace Moyer, everybody. Men's right activist extraordinaire. She's going to be the grand marshal of our straight pride parade next month. Everybody give it up for her. She knows how men suffer. All right, this is her concept, not my concept. Don't judge me. Judge her. All right. I didn't think it was hard to be a man these days until I tried to do that and got nothing. Now I'm like, what the fuck? All right, now I'm starting to get a couple guys to chuckle and hide. So I feel like I'm on something. Speaking of men's right, your next comedian, this is his first time here. Everybody, put your hands together for Booby Holiday. I honestly really have to piss and I kind of want to make you listen to it. <laughs> For motivational purposes. Happy Pride Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm proud to be an American. USA, let's bomb those children. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> dark. I'm going to tell you about a gay experience I had in the Bronx. I was with a Dominican girl and uh, things were getting hot and heavy. She brought a overnight bag, which means she stayed at my house for at least two weeks. If you know about anything about girls from the Bronx. And uh, she wanted to eat my ass. And that was the first time I ever had my ass eaten. And I was kind of like, no. <laughs> and uh, it was Thanksgiving and uh, she put her hand on my chest and she said, stop being a bitch. And my life was changed. All right. Oh, man, I broke it. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> so yeah, I met my sponsor on Reddit. That was cool, come Lord 97. <laughs> Everything was all bueno until we couldn't meet up because I lived 500 yards between a school. <laughs> That's a pedophile joke, you can laugh. We're all industry people, this is Hollywood. <laughs> oh man. So. I try to avoid girls who listen to podcasts because I don't want to listen to them. <laughs> I'm an asshole, you just gotta bear with me. Oh man, cheating is so fucking hard. I don't know how people get away with it. My girl freaking looked me in the eye and said when I'm happy and uh, that's a big red flag in all my relationships. All right. 
Oh man. So I should have looked at my phone, but that's okay. I thought I was gonna unplug it again. All right. I miss living in New York. Anybody lived in New York before? No? Yeah, yeah. New Yorkers. <laughs> Fucking made it, man. I miss my tiny box apartment, my tiny rat neighbors. I miss shoveling snow, and I miss uh, playing the Bushwick disco where you can't tell if you're doing cocaine or ketamine. I miss all my little friends and their poppers. <laughs> oh, man. All right, my nephew, he gets bullied a lot, so I bought him a gun. <laughs> Joke's on them. <laughs> I really wish the children of the corn were still here. That lady was fun. <laughs> but it's okay. I got Stanley Tucci working the camera. I loved you with the lovely bones. Big fan, sir. Oh, man. So uh, I had to steal condoms from my stepdad once. And uh, that's the day I realized my mother has herpes. So it wasn't a really good day. For me. <laughs> like I said, it gets dark. <laughs> Vietnam. This guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, my friend, uh, okay, rounding it up. Last night was kind of crazy. I had to. Uh, Watched my friend get Narcan, and uh, I felt so bad I gave her a 30% discount on her next order. <laughs> All right, I love that one. <laughs> home sweet home. Uh, some people have vision boards. I don't have one of those. I have things I can't afford boards, and the first thing on that is a house. <laughs> <laughs> a little Richmond joke, all right. <laughs> I'm Boogie Holiday, and as always, if you need to buy weed, I'll be here. Seven, he finds out our headliner is 20 minutes, huh? Uh, all right, we are on to our final comedian of the night. Are you guys ready? Yeah. For the most action-packed. Okay, okay, I guess you guys aren't ready. They're leaving, that's the joke. Uh, your next comedian. No one was more upset than your next comedian when Donald Trump was convicted 34 times. Your next comedian posted 34 post on Facebook and said, not guilty. Doesn't even make sense. Why would he do that? I was pissed. I was trying to see my niece just had her kids in the air. Couldn't see it. Why? Because this fucking asshole. Okay, you don't like Trump and you don't like my Mexican niece. That's fine. Anyways, your next comic is the most MAGA comic we have in the city. He loves Trump and more than that, he loves living in a two-bedroom apartment and, this is true, uh, dissolving deer heads in salt boxes in the living room. And he's like, ah, girls come over, they get freaked out. And I'm like, yeah. It's the skulls on the gate that you're setting out to dry in the sun. That's what does it. He's like, why? If you don't believe that, add him on Facebook, Jack Parker. Everybody, put your hands together for the owner of Rust in Pieces, Jack Parker! Ow! It hurts so bad when he does it! Oh, he only got 50%. All right, for the fucking record, I live in a one-bedroom apartment, and you don't dissolve them in salt, you preserve them, you illiterate fuck. Everything else is true, though. Uh, all right, well, we're all fucking exhausted, so let's get this shindig going, guys! Astrology is just space racism. Let's talk about it. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, anyone here know their astrological signs against their fucking will? I do. 
You know how you do that? You date a witch. You know how they find out your rising sign? They find out the time of day you were born and the geographical location. Neither of which I provided to my last girlfriend. She just found that out. Also, what? Ben? Not James? Right. Sam. Sam. Yeah. Three letters, same thing. <laughs> so, Sam, I didn't mean to be mean to you before. It's just, uh, at the mic before this, uh, I listed my uh, sun, moon, and rising sign. And he's felt the need to bond with me over that. And he came over all excited to me. And he went, oh my gosh, we have the exact same signs. And I went, oh my god, I don't give a fuck! <laughs> you, you, know, you know what that means? Nothing. Our par Both of our mothers shot us out of their front butts at roughly the same time. In slightly similar geographical locations. I'm going to assume several years apart since you look eight. <laughs> uh, I don't fucking know. Uh, it's it's just weird anytime like I because here's the thing: the girls who are super into astrology tend to be recovering Catholics, and it's always the most hypocritical thing I ever see. Because uh, initially you think, well, people who are into uh, astrology, they are the most liberal people you will ever meet. They are the most welcoming people you will ever meet. They will say things like, you can never judge anyone on something they cannot change. Not on their race, not on their sexual identity, not on anything. Unless they're a Leo. I don't get, do, have you ever listened to a girl tell her girlfriends at brunch that the guy she's been seeing has an incompatible sign to her? And it sounds weirdly like a girl, like a white girl in the 50s trying to talk around the fact that she's dating a black guy. It's the exact same scenario. They're like, so you, we've been hearing a lot about Michael. What's he like? She's like, oh, he's so nice. You know, he buys me nice things. We went out on a great date. He's so respectful. I really think I'm, he might be the one. And they go, yeah. Out of curiosity, what is he? And she's like, he's a good man. What is he? Look, don't freak out. He's an Aries. You're a Pisces, goddammit! A fire sign and a water sign don't breathe! And it's really inconsiderate. Uh, all right, well, that was fun. Uh, all right, I have to wake up in five hours, so we're just going to see what random shit I can pull out of here. Um, oh, I... Uh, I'm losing my hearing. I was informed by a doctor. Uh, she said I have a presbycusis or some shit like that. I basically went to my doctor the other day, um, and she did all the uh, general physical, and uh, I, and uh, she she said, so you've actually been losing your hearing probably for a long time. Uh, you have currently about 75% uh, of your hearing left, but I think by the age of tw uh, 45 you won't have any left. She's like, you gotta stop going to all these raves and concerts and being around large crowds of people, which anyone who knows me knows I hate all three of those things. <laughs> She's a, and then she went, wait, wait, so you're not around a lot of loud things throughout most of your life? I went, not currently. She said, well, how can you be losing your hearing? I went, well, I'm one of nine siblings and my father is an artillery man. She said, is there any chance that you uh, could have gotten any of that from growing up on a military base? And I went, yes. So I actually called my dad up uh, the other day. I went, hey, um, I think actually I'm losing my hearing from being raised by you. And he, and this is his exact tone of voice, went, there's no way you're losing my he your hearing! <laughs> Parker men don't lose their hearing, Jack! I've been an artillery man for 34 years and I hear fire! I went, do you remember the day that you took, that all the Marines took their kids to see the, uh, to see the artillery launch? She said, yeah, it was an F-166A towed howitzer, what about it? I went, do you remember how you didn't give me earplugs because you didn't want the people underneath you to think your son was, and I quote, a sissy bitch? He went, yeah, look here you are, proving me wrong! Anyway, guys, that's all I want to work on. Please welcome Jacob and I'm safe. Jack Parker, everybody. 
He's the final comic. Let's actually try, everybody. Jack Parker. Everyone in this room is performers. Jack Parker. Yellow shirt. Jack Parker. Jack Parker. Give me a woo. <laughs> right. You know what? I agree. I watched your set. Wasn't that good? Uh, hey, guys. This is the comedy for most of you. We're here every first, sec first, third, and fifth Tuesday. Last time we were here, so I can't say there's no such thing as a fifth Tuesday. And then I had her pull out her phone, and I had her pull out her calendar app. And I said, there's a fifth Tuesday. She went, no. It's right, one, two, three, four, five. She went, you fucked my phone up. And she threw it in the ice bin. <laughs> That's a true story. I don't remember getting out of the ice bin. I guess it's my way of telling you there's an iPhone 7 in the ice bin downstairs. You guys want an iPhone 7? Doesn't work that well, but a 45-year-old woman is missing it. Anyways, hey guys, this has been Comedy for Host Sweet Home. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Uh, you've been wonderful. You've been great. Thank you. We're all going to hang out on the porch for a little bit. Have a drink. Good night. Goodbye. Oh my God, Silver. Thanks, Jacob. Rick, come in. Remind me next time. Put you up earlier. Yeah, no worries.